They're finally here, the brand new Leagues of Votan, brand new army from Games Workshop for Warhammer 40,000. Now we're gonna be covering your complete guide to this brand new codex. So throughout this video, we're gonna be covering absolutely everything there is to know about all of the army rules, and essentially, you'll need to know aspects of the book to get your army ready for the tabletop and also giving that information so if you're playing against this army you're gonna have a really good understanding of actually what you can expect your opponent to be bringing on the table so michael where are we going to start first with this codex first of all we're going to look at the army rules what makes leagues of votan votan yes okay uh, and then we're going to move on to more of their in-depth army rules an idea called judgment yep and then we'll move on to you know their stratagems, their warlord traits, everything you need to know about taking the army yeah. and putting it on the table. And then wrapping that up with some data sheet, looking at some of the most powerful combinations, and also looking at what an army list might finally look like as well. So Michael, let's get started straight away with what we can expect from the Votan in terms of their army rules. Well, Steve, First of all, we've got our detachment abilities. What do we get with a Votan detachment? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to know. The first one is that all of your Hearthkin warriors and also your pioneers are gonna become objective secured. So that basically means when you put your models on an objective in the game, that you're gonna control them over your opponent if they don't happen to have that rule. Very cool. Normally with a Warhammer 40,000 book, we would see this on something we call a troops choice but seeing this on our pioneers, which is our fantastic bikes, um, very, very interesting. Yeah, and it makes them extremely diverse when we get to those data sheets as they're extremely fast and have got a really cool ability where they can do that before the start of the game, which is really cool, but we'll come on to that later. Very interesting. What else do we get from this? Okay, so there is one restriction though with the army, okay, and it's called the Hero of the Oath Band, and basically you can only take one of the carls of the army. We've got a couple here. You can only take one of those in your army. So it's kind of like your leader. You can only have one. Cool. Uh, and a carl is your, like a captain, your, your king almost. Um, so it makes sense. Yeah, real buffing type of character. So you can only have one sort of, yeah, person spearheading the army. And then finally, we need to pick a league. A league, a voter. Um, a league custom we need to pick. Um, and when all of our army is from that same league, then they're going to get those benefits and we're going to cover all of those. Well, on top of that, we've got to look at uh, another special rule unique to the leagues of Votan. Um, before we jump into the individual leagues uh, and what they get, let's talk about this unique rule called Eye of the Ancestors. Yeah, now the Eye of the Ancestors is an extremely powerful ability. And you're only going to get this when your entire army is made of leagues of Votan, okay? okay? And also from the same custom league. So what this basically means is that when we're playing in the game, we're actually going to start to judge our opponent's units for doing certain things. I don't want to get judged, Steve. There's a lot of judgment going on, Michael. And uh, basically, depending on what you do as my opponent, okay. I'm going to start to put judgment tokens down on you, okay? They can range from one to begin with, right the way up to three. Once right. you've gained a judgment token, it's going to stay on you until the end of the game or until your unit's destroyed. That's not very nice. No, it's not very nice. And it's going to get worse because basically when one of your units has a judgment token on it, every time I roll to hit, whether I'm shooting you or fighting you in combat, each dice roll of a six counts as a six to wound. Now, a quick note on this a certain rule interaction due to the errata uh, that happened on the 29th of September. It now states that page 86, the Eye of the Ancestors, the fifth paragraph changed to read, note, if an attack automatically wounds the target as a result of this ability, then for the purposes of any other rules that are triggered on a particular wound roll, that attack is never considered to have been made with an unmodified wound of a six. So this, what we've just done, it was recorded before the errata. I have mentioned this now, so if there's any other time in the video in which we state that it counts as a six to wound, that will be incorrect. And in fact, it's just a natural wound roll. I hope that helps. 
so I don't have to actually roll that dice. This is really powerful because I'm essentially skipping an entire roll step in the game. Wow. Really strong. It's a bit much. I know. Now, you mentioned you can get more than one of these tokens. Yeah, so when you get to two tokens, okay. every time I roll a hit of a five or a six, then it counts as a six to wound. It's still is getting worse by the minute. Yeah, now you know what's going to happen when it gets to three tokens, don't you? Oh, God. On a four plus. So a four, five or six to hit is going to classify as a six to wound. That's unbelievable. And let me guess. There's some special rules in here, or special guns, where on a six to wound, something special happens. Don't give it all away, Michael. There's definitely going to be some things later <laughs> on where we're going to discuss that. Now, um, basically, in terms of the judgment tokens, mm -hmm. the reason why we're covering this first is because when we come into your custom leagues, and this is basically like your sub-faction rules, yep. and there's different ways to play the Votan, each of them have a really unique way in which they interact with the Eye of the Ancestors. Okay. Well, you talked about what they do. Yeah. How do we get them? Right, so this is going to depend on you, really, is my opponent. Okay. If you kill one of my units... Are you going to judge me? You get a judgment token. Okay? Fair enough. Obviously, I don't like it when you destroy my units. So that's what you get. Now, the next time... There's three different ways. Okay. The next one is if you successfully complete an action or a psychic action. So obviously, performing actions in the game yeah. is a way that you can achieve certain mission parameters. Yep. If you successfully complete that, then you're going to get a judgment token. So if you're already on one, because maybe you killed one of my units, yeah. it would then go to two. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now there's a third way. At the end of your turn, yeah. I can pick one of your units that's on an objective anywhere on the battlefield, and I can give it a judgment token. Just one of them. So if I had multiple units on different objectives, yeah. you just pick one. Yeah, I can select one enemy unit within range of objective marker. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. And that's how you get them. But there are other ways, as you can probably imagine, and we're going to cover those when we get to some of the data sheets and stratagems and all those extra abilities. But that is your fundamental way and baseline of how you essentially become judged. And that's how you can start judging people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since you're a league above the rest, Steve, um, do you want to talk us through some of these leagues? I'm going to keep this pretty short, okay? Now, essentially, when you select one of your custom leagues, all right, you essentially get two bullet points of rules, then okay. that's going to basically spread across your entire army. So, for example, these different custom leagues are a little bit like whether you're being an Ultramarine or an Imperial Fist or whatever it is that you are as a Space Marine, it's very similar to being a different chapter, okay? And each of those have a really unique way of playing on the tabletop. So you're going to get two bullet points of rules there. Very nice. You're then going to get what we call your Ancestral Judgment, which is how your custom league interacts with Judgment Tokens. Okay. You then get a Warlord Trait, a Stratagem, and a Relic. But you can only get access to these if your entire army and all of the units in your army are made up from this custom league. Okay. So if you choose to do two custom leagues, right. then you're not going to get either. Well, that's lame. Yeah. Well, there are six leagues, I believe, that are given to us and a way to make your own if you wanted to make up your own narrative for a league, which you absolutely can do. Yeah. What's the first league? The Greater Thoran League. Okay. Now these are kind of like the poster boys of the army, um, and if the ones that I've kind of painted here with the white and then also the kind of tealy blue mm -hmm. sort of cloth. Now the Greater Thran League are the one that, I will say this now, gain access to the one named character in the book. Okay. Okay, Uthan the Destin can only be taken in a Greater Uthan League, okay? Cool. And there are two bullet points of rules. Essentially, the first one means that each of your models counts as two for the purposes of holding objectives. Wow, that's very powerful. Um, so if you're not familiar with how you hold objectives in the game, you usually count up how many models each player's got on an objective. But if I had five on there and you had five of your Greater Thurin League, you'd count as having ten. That's right. That's yeah. really powerful. Yeah, and obviously as we're trying to hold objectives in our command phases, in order to score points on the primary mission, then yeah, you can probably tell how powerful this is gonna be. Oof. Yeah. And the other bullet point? And the other bullet point is every time I am selected to shoot or fight, 
I can re-roll one hit roll or one wound roll. Nice. Because obviously we hit, we then roll to wound, Yeah. and then you've obviously got armor saves to make. Very so good. any of those unsuccessful hit rolls or wound rolls, I can pick one. And it's obviously my choice when I choose to do that. And this is really powerful when we start to combine that with obviously those judgment tokens. Mm -hmm. When we're looking to roll, for example, a six to hit, we can sometimes re-roll that hit roll, which is really fantastic with some of those really powerful weapons we'll come on to later. Yeah, nice. Okay, we've mentioned Ancestral Judgment and each yeah. of the leagues get an ability here. So what's the one for the Great Thuron League? Okay, I get plus one to my roll. So essentially, when I am targeting a unit that, let's say, has got one Judgment token on okay. it, and I'd normally need a six, yeah. I essentially count as having one more. Right. judgment token when i target you so i would trigger on fives rather than sixes okay so if one of my units had one judgment token um that would normally be a, a six to hit is a six to wound yep but if you're shooting at me with the great theron league then a five to hit would be a six to wound because you count me as having two tokens exactly rather than just the one yeah very interesting and then obviously if you had two tokens on you mm -hmm. when i target you it's going to essentially count as having three Wow, so a four yeah. to hit would be a six to wound. That's amazing. Yeah, which is really powerful in the army because you yeah. want to get people up to that kind of three sweet spot. Yeah. But for me, I can actually spread tokens out a little bit wider mm -hmm. and a little bit more diverse and just get people up to the two yeah. before I then try and destroy them. Yeah. And it's much quicker to do that than trying to wait and you know build up until you get three tokens on a unit. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful, yeah. And I think very underrated as well. Well, let's talk about their Warlord traits, their Relic, and their Stratagem. Let's kick off with their Warlord trait. So the Warlord trait, I would say, is quite useful in terms of regenerating you command points. Okay. So each and every time you spend a command point as the um, Greater Ulthran player, if this Warlord's on the battlefield, you're going to roll a dice, and a five up, you're going to get that CP refunded. Fantastic. And we'll come to Stratagems later. We're going to mention some for the leagues as well, um, but they'll cost a certain number of command points, and yep. we can get those back with this Warlord trait. Basically resources that you have in the game. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, speaking of Stratagems, yep. what is the Stratagem for the Greater Thuron League? The Appraising Glare. Oh. Okay. Now, essentially, when my Greater Uthan Karl model... Okay. He has an ability that in the start of my command phase, which yeah. is essentially the start of my turn... Yeah. If I can visibly see one of your units on the table, mm -hmm. I can go have a Judgment Token. That is another way of giving a unit a Judgment Token. you basically giving me... a cold hard stare that's it however with this one cp stratagem yeah what i can basically do at that time when i glare at you i spend this cp and it now becomes an appraising glare <laughs> and it counts as having an additional token it's like you had my curiosity now you have my attention that's it and now you're going to get two judgment tokens on you rather than just one very nice which basically means for me and my army i'm taking you from zero yeah to three because of obviously i get that kind of plus one boom that's really strong really really good yeah. really like that really like that it's really good yeah for one cp it's great okay uh, and the relic we've got corvix cuirass yes. what does that do for us okay so this gives my bearer a four plus invulnerable save Okay, and then each time any kind of damage or any attack is allocated to this model, yeah, I can reduce the armor penetration of that attack by one. That's very nice. Now, this does actually stack with their void armor. So okay. all of the models in the army essentially have void armor. Um, if you're familiar in the game at the moment, we know it is armor of contempt. Yeah. So basically, if you've got, let's say, a gun, which is, I don't know, minus two. Yep. So armor, got armor penetration of minus two. So I would reduce your save by minus two normally. On the dice rolls, yeah. On yep. the dice roll, yeah. Void armor mm -hmm. ignores the first one. Ah, so it becomes minus one. Minus one. And then this ability would trigger on top and therefore, I'd basically count as, the well, as if you had zero AP when you were nice. fighting me. Yeah. Yep. yep. Very, very, very nice. Uh, for void armor and um, all the sorts of weapons, fancy, funky weaponry that the Votan have, we will definitely be covering that later in this video. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that. That covers the Greater Thuron League. Let's move on. Our second league is the Trans Hyperion Alliance. These guys, we've got some actually in the studio because James, of course, from Siege Studios, 
brought them in and he's painted them. He's done a fantastic job. Um, and these guys, that beautiful orange colour as well. Yeah, super vibrant. And um, yeah, obviously James did a great job on these guys. Now, this custom league, I think, is extremely tactical. Okay. All right. Maybe the damage output might not necessarily hit the hardest, mm -hmm. but I think some of their elements are really tactical and it's going to give you a lot of flexibility. Like we always talk about tools in the toolbox. Yep. And I think for me, this one has a lot of them. All right. Well, let's go through what they get for being Trans Hyperion Alliance. Okay. So the first aspect that you're going to get is when your unit is under its starting strength, you're going to get plus one to your hit roll. Brilliant. So if you've lost any models from that unit, yeah. then you're going to get plus one to your hit rolls. Now, remember, some of the warriors, the Hearthguard warriors, you can take them into units of 20. Wow. And actually, losing, losing one model is quite common. Mm. So all of a sudden, you go from hitting on a ballistic skill of 3 plus to a 2 plus. Yeah, wow. And with the Carl nearby, who gives you reroll ones to hit, you're hitting on twos, rerolling ones. That's very efficient. Very efficient, very effective, and it gives you the opportunity to fish for those sixes on those rerolls as well. Very good. Now, the next one here is that every time you roll an unmodified wound roll of six. Okay. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. Increase the armor penetration of that attack by one. And this is for shooting and combat. Okay. Right. So each time they make an attack, an unmodified wound roll of six. Yeah. Which, when you have the judgment tokens. Yep. That counts as an unmodified wound roll of six. Yeah. So if you've got enough judgment tokens, these guys become really, really potent because they get that extra armor penetration. Yep. Wow. So imagine you've got seven attacks. Yeah. You roll the seven dice, and on, obviously on that, you can expect there to be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, and then one other random one, right? Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's say the one misses. Yeah. Fine. We, let's say we've got no rerolls. We get rid of that. Everything else hits. Yeah. But that six we rolled yeah. goes through and automatically wounds with that additional AP because of that one judgment token on it. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. If we had more than one judgment token on it, yeah. let's say we had three, the four, the five, and the six would go straight through as a wound roll with that additional armor penetration. Very nice. We would then pick up the other three dice remaining that we haven't wounded with yet. We'd roll those dice and then you've got a kind of 50-50 chance if you're going to roll another six or not yeah. on those three, okay? Yeah, so very good. So there could be potentially four attacks out of those seven, which are counting as that additional AP. That's really interesting, uh, and this is obviously it's the first trait we've seen so far that directly links in to those judgment tokens counting as an unmodified six to wound. Yep, yeah. and obviously in the mirror match, mm -hmm. in a mirror match is when I'm also playing against Leeds of Votan. Yeah. That's really powerful because it gets around their void armor. Yeah. It gets around space marines with their armor of contempt, sisters yeah. of battle. So actually, at the moment, a very good pick, I think, for the meta. I agree. All right. Well, speaking of judgment, their ancestral judgment, what do these guys do that works around um, judgment tokens? Okay. So if you have a judgment token on you, I get to re-roll my wound rolls of a one. Wow. Okay. And this is a very rare rule in this book. Yeah. There's only one model in the book, the champion, that can give you re-rolls of one, and that's only to one particular type of unit. So this is now army-wide. Wow. Giving you more opportunities to fish for those. When we say fish, we mean just kind of try your luck again yeah. at getting another six to wound, obviously, for that additional AP. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's really, really strong. Yeah. Okay. Wall or up next? Yeah. So this can go on any of your, obviously, characters. Now remember, you can't take the name character, Uthan the Destined, because yeah. he's only that greater uh, Thuran League we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You can pick three units at the start of the game okay. that are wholly within your deployment zone, Cool. and you can put them somewhere else. You can basically redeploy three units. That's fantastic. So three of your units, you can pick them up after both sides are deployed, yeah. um, and you know who's going first. You pick those three units up, you put them back down in your deployment zone, um, anywhere there. That's really, really cool. And as you said, very tactical. It is because this army is so slow. Yeah. You know, uh, as, you'll, as you'll find out later, the general movement of the Hearthguard Warriors and some of the other units is much more restricted compared yeah. to other factions in the game. Yeah. So, in order to actually get the board presence and get the coverage on the table to get in the fight quick enough mm -hmm. to get on those objectives, 
you actually need to put the army on the front line. Yeah. But that's only good if you're going first. Yeah. If you go second, you've just put your army on the front line and your opponent can just shoot you off the table. With this redeploy now, it gives you an opportunity to pick up those big blocks of 20 guys, put them behind terrain, so they're safe, at least for then for the next turns, and you can you know have some sort of attack then. Yeah. Or maybe you set up to go second, you redeploy to be aggressive. That's fantastic. Really, really good tactical abilities there. And of course, it's got the additional rider where you can put those units into strategic reserves. Yeah. So you can come on as reinforcements later in the game. Yeah. Very strong. You can imagine 20 of these um, Hearthkin warriors just turning up on the board edge. Yeah. That's a lot. That's really cool. And they've got really great cool. range. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's not like that can be a, a necessarily an issue. You're not yeah. looking for a charge roll. You're literally coming on and you're shooting all these big brick units. Now, remember, the other thing is the bikes. You know, we spoke about uh, the, the pioneers. Yep. So they get a move just before the game, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. So this unit, the bike units that can fly, they can pre-game moves. OK, so they can move up to 12 inches in this same stage. Very good. Now, as it's your deployment phase, mm -hmm. you can redeploy these units, yep. then you could pre-game move them. Yeah, this yeah. gives you so much more tactical flexibility yeah. because you could put half of your army one side, mm -hmm. switch it to the other, and then use the pre-game moves to then attack on a different flank. So all of a sudden is my opponent, you're like, well, what's going on? Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, so for me, this is a must war or trade, absolutely taking this every game. I agree, that's fantastic. Kind of talking myself into taking this one, cool. So, let's look at that stratagem. Yes. We've got Cult of Veneration. Basically, when I suffer a wound as a result of a mortal wound, mm -hmm. for one CP, then I can basically get a five plus save against that mortal wound. Fantastic. So mortal wounds, if you're not familiar, they sort of cut through any kind of armor save or invulnerable save. It's sort of just like a, you're wounding their mind. It like to go straight through any armor and stuff. So that's really good for these guys. Yeah. Because otherwise you could just kill them with these mortal wounds. Yeah. Great on vehicles, especially some armies with loads of psychic powers that want to deliver a huge amount of mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. I can see how many mortal wounds you've done yeah. before I even use the stratagem. That's so good. And like on a unit of 20 models as well. Yeah. Really, really strong. I like it. So I could see if you've done a super smite mm -hmm. and I can see the result of the super smite yeah. before I declare if I'm even going to use this. Yeah. Because if you roll a one on the super smite, I'm thinking I'll just take one model off. That's okay. Yeah. If you roll a big six, I don't want to lose six models. Yeah. I'll now try and save, you know, 33% of them using this stratagem. Yeah. So you I think probably know what a super smite is. If you don't, basically, when you cast smite, one of the more wound psychic powers, you, it can go off real big and you can yeah. do a lot more mortal wounds. Um, yeah. So as you say, you can see whether they roll low or high and then use this stratagem. Yeah. Right. Let's look at the relic. Yeah. The Corv Duas. Okay. Now, this can only be taken on a Trans Hyperion Alliance Grimnir. Right, what's a Grimnir, real quick? Okay, so that is the Psyker in the army. Okay. Uh, um, this guy is fantastic at psychic powers. Cool. There's some really good buffing powers we're going to talk about later. Okay. Now, he comes with essentially a couple of drone assistants. Right. All right. And they're called Corv models. Okay. All right. Now, what that means is they are actually arbitrary wounds to the model. Right. So when the unit is attacked, Mm -hmm. I can just get, if you hit me with a really powerful damage attack, yeah. I can just get rid of one of these little servitors kind of drone things yeah, nice. and then keep my Grim there safe. Yeah. Now, what I basically get by taking this relic is I get one additional wound on each of them. That's cool. So it makes the unit a little bit more durable to single damage and double damage attacks. Okay. Yep. Um, also, while the bearer's unit contains one or more of those models, okay, I can attempt to deny one more psychic power. That's really cool. So again, against some really heavy Psyker armies, having two denies in the list is great. Yep. Um, and then also, while I contain one of those core models, I get plus one to my, the result of my dice. That's so good. rather than needing to beat your dice rolls, I can just equal them in order to stop it. So if you roll two dice and you roll a seven, mm -hmm. if I was to normally roll a seven, that would be a fail. Your psychic power would go off. That's right. Obviously, with this plus one, it now counts as an eight. It beats yours. I'm good. Amazing. Power stopped, yeah. Fantastic. So Trans-Hyperion Alliance, as you say, tactical, some cool anti-psychic stuff yep. uh, in there as well. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. I and think they're course, really good. Their colour scheme beautifully demonstrated by Siege Studios. Yeah. 
Let's move on to the next. Next we have the Cronus Hegemony. These guys are cool. My personal favourite colour scheme, yellow with black armour. What do you get for being one of these Cronus Hegemony Votan guys? Okay, so this is the army that absolutely loves the fight phase. Okay. So the fight phase in the game is basically when you want to get up close, personal, and start using your axes, your swords, your hammers, basically in combat. Right, so if you like the fight phase and hitting things up close... This is the one. This yeah. is the army for you. Yeah. Now, basically, in the fight phase, if I charge you, or if you charge me, okay. or I perform a heroic intervention with one of my units... Okay. Okay, and my characters can heroically intervene. Yep. And there's a stratagem to allow my unit to heroically intervene as well. Okay. I get plus one strength, and I also get plus one attack. That's really cool. The plus one attack is massive. All right. Well, we'll just quickly cover heroic intervention for those who don't know what it means. Yeah. But essentially, in your opponent's sort of charge phase, when they've charged all their units, you can sort of jump into combat with some of your units yeah. to protect maybe objectives or your, your friends on the table. Yeah. Um, so that's that's basically heroic intervention. Yeah. Now they get an ancestral judgment ability. Of course they do. Like all the others. Now, if you have two judgment tokens on you, yeah. and we're in the fight phase, yeah. all of my attacks, my AP is improved by one. Wow. So what we're rounding that up, basically. In the fight phase, most of the time, if someone's charged, yeah. you're going to get plus one attack. Plus one strength. Plus one strength. Plus one AP. Plus one AP. Yeah. Oh, good. It's going to hurt in combat. Yeah. All it's, right. It's very similar to like a Bloody Rose yeah. um, combat army from the Adeptus Sororitas or the Sisters of the Battle as we know them, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, let's see if the rest of their stuff ties in. What's their Warlord trait? Okay, the Warlord trait, again, is very thematic to this kind of style of army. And I love it when I see an army that really got what we call on our academy leaning into one approach mm. yeah it really does this one thing and it does it so well and it fights exactly how you want it to on the table you don't have like disjointed rules and this does it beautifully so the ward will trait the exemplary hero what a name okay so if I, in the fight phase yeah. i'm in combat with a character or monster mm -hmm. i get plus one to my attacks characteristic Okay? Okay. So I get plus one attack against monsters and characters. And this is on top of the potential plus one attack from the yes. trait. Very exactly. Good. I also, and I get this all the time, okay. I can re-roll my hit roll. Okay, so most of the characters are hitting on twos anyway, but twos re-rolling ones. Good. Yeah, it's good. Again, you could fish for those sixes. If you're looking for sixes or fours or fives because you know it straight away commits to a six to wound, yeah. you absolutely try it. Then finally, the last one, so there's three bullet points on this wall or tray. Okay. If I'm in combat with a character or a monster, I get plus one to my wound roll. So let's say I normally need a three to wound. Now, if I roll a two, it's now successful. Okay. However, this would not trigger, let's say I needed a six to wound for something right. special to happen. Yeah. Because this is a modified attack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This sounds really good. I like how this combines with the trait because you can have that plus one strength and then also the plus one to wound. Yep. So you could really, really manipulate that. Um, and I like how it fits with the, with the theme. Yeah. What about the stratagem? Okay, it's called bloody expectations. I think that's going to fit with the theme. Yeah. Now, in the fight phase again, carrying on leaning into this approach, when I fight, every time my unit rolls a six to hit, okay. Okay, it causes an additional hit to happen. All right, okay. Well, I think there's something very important to explain at this stage. Um, so, obviously, a six to hit, if you're hitting someone with a judgment token, yeah. that counts as a six to wound, right? Yeah. However, the additional hit, yes. very important, does not count as a six to wound. No. So, if you roll one six to hit, you would auto wound once so on that's that six. Yes. And then you'd have to roll to wound with this extra attack you've just generated. Yeah, that's right. Okay, very cool. Okay. Very, very important just to, to explain that. Yeah, because a lot of people will get that confused. And again, this is why it's so important you watch this. If you're playing against the army, you know exactly how this works as well. So you don't get caught out of the table. Very cool. All right, well, let's move on to their relic, the Just Blade. That's a, it's just a blade. It's just a, just the, it's just the blade. It's a, that's it. All right, well, what does it do? Okay, so this relic <laughs> replaces a forge wrought plasma axe or dark star axe and has the following profiles. Okay, so who can we take this on? So the first one is the Carl of the army. Okay, so and then the second one is the champion. 
All right. They're the only two. Okay. And what does it do? Because I'm going to assume it buffs them in combat some way. It gives them plus one strength. Okay. We've already get plus one strength anyway. Yeah, nice. So have another plus one strength. And then you get the armor penetration of this attack is minus four AP. That's quite strong. Now remember, if they've got two judgment tokens on them, it's going to be minus five. Yes. So this means a unit on a two plus armor save yes. would go to a three up, four up, five up, six up, no save. Unless they have what we call an invulnerable save, yeah. which basically is like a cap on that yeah. point, and then you would get like a four up or five up invulnerable save, like a magic save, right? Okay. However, this one has a bit of an ability. All right. And each time the attack is made with this weapon, invulnerable saves cannot be made against that attack. So if you had an invulnerable save, it's no good. Minus five AP if you've got two judgment tokens on you. A bit much. A bit much there, Steve. And it's two, two damage. Two damage as well. Which okay. is good. It is good. It can be mitigated by like damage reduction and other aspects. Yeah. But what a great... That is a great weapon. What a great axe. That's a great axe. This, for me, is the one that I really want to play most. I think I'm yeah. going to have the most fun with this one. Yeah. Tactically, I really like the Trans Hyperion, but mm. so far, this one's getting my vote. All right, well, let's move on to the next one. Next, we have the Ymir Conglomerate. Hmm. These guys are interesting. It looks like they're more shooting focused. Do you want to take us through their league custom? Yeah, we'll do. So again, like you mentioned, these guys do like to shoot. And the first bullet point allows them to have an additional four inches on their ranged attacks. So basically all their guns, extra four inch range. Which That's works quite, cool. quite well for a slow army. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And yep. some of their more powerful guns are short range. And you'll mm. see some of those later when we discuss beam weapons. Yeah. Very nice. And what's their second bullet point? Okay. So if you have a two plus armor save. Okay. And that's going to basically be your champions mm -hmm. and also the hearth guard units. Okay. Like the big chunky guys. Yeah. Or the land fortress. Yeah. Then you gain a 4-plus invulnerable save. That's very nice. Everybody else gets a 5-plus invulnerable save. That's even nicer. Hearthkin Warriors, we're looking at a 4-plus armor save. Yeah. So getting a 5-plus invulnerable save really keeps them alive. Now, just to quickly note, the Carl, yeah. you can give an ability to therefore have an aura of 5-plus uh, invulnerable save anyway. Okay. But that's okay. only against ranged attacks. Right. So this would trigger in combat as well. So that's in the fight really phase good. and shooting that's phase. That's really good. Yeah. Okay. Very, very nice. All right. What about their ancestral judgment? Okay, cool. So when you're in half range okay. of a unit that has one judgment token on it, mm -hmm. then the armor and penetration is improved by one. So first of all, what you'd have to do is take the range of your weapon Add on four, because that's obviously the range characteristic of your ability. Yeah. Then when you're in half range, then obviously it's an additional AP on that what you know attack. I don't like this, Steve. These guys are pretty shooty already. Very shooty. And uh they're just, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Alright? No, I'm not alright. Okay. <laughs> what about that wardrobe trait? Okay. It's called the Guild Connections. Okay. The damage characteristics of all weapons this Warlord is equipped with. All of them. All of them. Okay. Is increased by one. Okay. Now, this does exclude relics. Okay, so you can't stack this with some relic to make some silly, bonkers weapon. No. But if you've got, like, a million different guns. Yeah. Or a million different combat weapons. Yeah. You can increase the damage of every single one. Yeah, so it'd be quite good. You could shoot well, and then you could obviously then um, fight a little bit better as well. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. Pretty good, yeah, I, I think like so. It. Well, I like that water trait. Let's talk about the stratagem, post beam discharge. Yeah, now this is a one CP stratagem, and basically, obviously, when you pick your unit to shoot in the shooting phase, one model. Okay. Okay, yeah. this is really important, it's one model. Right. When it's selected to shoot, so you can pick a unit, mm -hmm. but then only one model can actually have this ability. Okay. Okay. Select that one model in the unit, and then you select one beam weapon that right. it's equipped with until the end of the phase. Each time a hit is scored with that weapon, 
The target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So a beam weapon, we kind of need to talk about what that means. Now, you may not have seen beam weapons before, but essentially, if it targets an enemy unit and it hits, then it will also hit other enemy units in between. Yeah. You sort of draw a line um, and you can only hit things that you can see. But we'll do an example later in the video um, just to make it absolutely clear uh, and you can see exactly what beam weapons do. Yeah, exactly. So this can be quite potent because obviously you are essentially being able to hit other units you wouldn't normally be able to because yeah. you're hitting everything that's in the path. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really powerful stratagem that we're going to see on the tabletop, I think. I agree. Lastly, the relic. Say lastly, the last crest of Jaluk. What does this do? Okay, so once per battle, okay. you can basically trigger the last crest of Jaluk. Okay. All right. And you gain a three plus invulnerable save until the end of the phase. Nice. Okay. Nice. I like it. But in addition to that, every time you suffer a wound as the result of a mortal wound, then on a D6, a four plus, you're going to ignore it. That okay. wound is not lost. So that will work on um, psychic powers that do mortal wounds. Vehicles, vehicles exploding. exploding, doing yeah. mortal wounds, any other form of mortal wounds. Yeah. That's quite nice. A three plus and vulnerable, very rare in the game of Warhammer 40k. Yeah. So wherever you can get it, it really increases your survivability. Yeah, it's huge. I like it. That's really, really cool. Overall, the Ymir conglomerate, what do you think? All right. I think they're okay in terms of like their... I was just shooting and I'm not a big fan of shooting armies. Of course not. But I think if you do like shooting armies, this is certainly one to lean into because if you like those and you like the way beams look, and we'll show you those later, then obviously, um, yeah, this is the one for you. Absolutely. Very nice. Finally, I know I said six. There's actually five, Steve. There's five. There's five. Don't worry. The Urani Serta Regulates. Okay, and their custom is Dower Survivalists. What does this do for us? Well, they certainly survive a little bit longer with this one. They gain a plus one toughness characteristics for all models with that custom. Okay, now off the bat, that seems really strong. If you yeah. put that in any other 40k armor in the game. Plus one toughness. Plus one toughness, I'm taking that all day. Yeah. Um, can you give me a couple of examples where this is actually really quite good? Yeah, because it's interesting because the army's quite tough anyway. Yeah. You'd think giving it an extra toughness would make it really tough. Mm. But the way that dice mechanics work, and yeah. you think about the weapon profiles we often see to target certain units, yeah. then I would say this is really powerful on two units. Yeah kind of okay on one mm -hmm. and probably ineffective in a lot of other search situations. Okay. So who's the big winner from plus, plus one toughness? So the biggest winner for me is just your regular Hearthkin warriors. Yeah. Because you're going to have a lot of them. Yep. And you could really put a lot of these on the table. Yeah. So for me, these are the biggest winners because they're toughness four. Yeah. Taking them to toughness five means that any strength eight weapons are only going to wound on a three, not a two. Yep. And all the sort of strength four weapons, the strength four weapons in the game that are designed for killing lots and lots of infantry like this, all of a sudden are wounding on fives. So yeah. you change the sweet spot from wounding on a four to wounding on a five. Yeah. And that is why it's so impactful on this unit. Yeah. The other unit I think is really good on is the land fortress. Oh. All of a sudden, those really potent anti-tank weapons like Melter, yeah. like Plasma, rocket launchers, yeah. Thunder Hammers, Power Fist, majority of these are Strength 8, wounding on 4s, but now they're wounding on 5s. That's really cool. It's going to keep it around a lot longer. Yeah. Um, and of course, anything that's like a LAS cannon, Strength 9, suddenly from 3s, it's now 4s to wound. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. And yep. of course, I can't wait to see the Land Fortress yep. uh, at some point. Now, all the others, like the bikes and the Berserkers and the Hearthguard Warriors, mm -hmm. they're already Toughness 5. Yeah. So they would go up to T6. Yeah. So that only affects weapons that are Strength 5 or, or strength, strength 6. Three. Or yeah, strength, strength 3. Or Strength 3. So it's okay. It's all right, but it, I don't think it changes the math as well as I it agree. multiplies on the other two units we've already mentioned. Yeah. I agree. Excellent. Uh, and the other half of their league custom? You can re-roll morale checks. 
Okay. Now, this is really good when you're taking smaller units. Yes. Let's say units of 10. But when mm -hmm. you start to take these big bricks of 20 that yeah. you can take on the hearth, Warriors, then all of a sudden, if you're losing eight or so models, yeah. you're probably going to fail it anyway. That's true. So you just got another chance to roll a one, so it passes that morale check. Yeah. But really good if you were taking 10-man units. Yeah. Really yeah. effective there, I think. I like it. It's nice also, I mean, you know, even if you do fail the first morale check on them, yeah. once you're now down to that lower model count, yeah. um, it can come an impactful, um, as we'll talk about when we come to data sheets, etc. Yeah. Um, you're generally taking a few special weapons in these 20-man blobs. Yeah. So keeping them alive is your main priority. So maybe it'll come in helpful there. Yeah. Maybe. And like we said earlier, the plus one toughness, though, I would say that's always like a kind of top-tier ability. Yes. Because it affects your opponent's game all the way through. Yeah. It affects them in the combat phase. Yeah. It affects them in the shooting phase. And obviously, you've got this extra survivability now in the morale phase. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Excellent. What's their ancestral judgment? Okay. Now, this is probably my favorite. Out of all of the different ones, I think it's probably the most effective across the game earlier on. Okay. Basically, every time I target one of your units, it's considered to have one judgment token on it. Okay, not one more. Yeah. Because we had that with the Greater Thurin League. Yeah. They just count as one if they have zero. Yeah, because imagine I'm going first, right? Mm -hmm. And we're in the command phase. Yeah. And maybe I can't see any of your units from my mm. Carl, so I can't give any units judgment tokens. Yeah. You haven't killed anything yet. You haven't done any actions yet. You haven't done any psychic actions yet. And it hasn't been your turn for me to pick a unit on an objective to have a judgment token on it. Yeah. So even if I can get an angle and move into a position where I can stick a judgment token on you, that's really useful. Yes. Because normally I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. I wouldn't actually be able to get a judgment token on you at all. There is one way, but I think this way I can just kind of, without spending any CPs, start fishing for those sixes. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. That's and I really think nice. actually it's quite useful, yeah. Okay, all right. What about our warlord trait, Grim Pragmatism? Okay, this is just a five plus feel no pain against that attack. That okay. comes in or, you know, five plus feel no pain for damage. If you lose a wound on a five, you don't. Yep, so it's like another save you can have to make, yeah. again, more durable. Very nice. And then waste not your last breath. Never waste it. Make sure you use it. Your characters can fight on death, providing that they haven't already fought that phase. Yeah. So let's say you come into me, you come mm -hmm. into my champion with this big hammer, yeah. and you kill him. I'm like, cool, I'm going to spend one CP. In most other books, this is two CPs. Yeah. I can now fight. That's very good. So I'm not wasting my last breath. I can still hit yeah. you back. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, makes your characters very scary. You have to think twice before charging them, right? Yeah. 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 All right, and then the relic. Okay, cool. So this basically means you cannot target my characters unless they are the closest and also eligible target. Right, okay. Um, so normally in the game we have Lookout Sir, which affects characters. If the character is within three inches of either a unit with three or more models, um, it could be a vehicle or monster, yeah. or potentially um, a much larger vehicle or monster that might also be a character. Yeah. Um, you can't shoot them because they're sort of protected. Yeah. Now, you don't actually have to be within three inches of anything. Provided you're not the closest target, yeah. you're just not an eligible target. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You could leave like your, I don't know, your kind of Grimnia at the back. Yeah. And as long as he's not the closest yeah. and sure. eligible, then... You can't shoot him, regardless of how far the rest of the army is. Yeah, so it's quite useful. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. Like it. So that sums up our main leagues. Yeah. Um, we'll briefly talk about the custom leagues. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's some hidden gems in there as well. Next, we have our established league customs. So these are our made up leagues. So if you don't fancy doing one of the ones we've covered already, and you want to maybe write your own narrative, make your own one up, or perhaps you just want to try out a different combo of abilities, we're going to look at these. First of all, how do these work, Steve? Well, different to the main ones that we've already mentioned, you're not going to gain that specific stratagem that only you can use. You're not going to get a wall or trait, and you're not going to get that relic. Okay. And typically, we kind of had two bullet points of mm -hmm. rules, and then we had that kind of 
ancestral judgment ability. Yeah. You basically get to pick those three bullet points. Okay. So one of the ones that you pick here, and it does say, for example, like brutal efficiency here, underneath where it says brutal efficiency, it says ancestral judgment. Okay. You have to pick one ancestral judgment. Yeah. And only one. Okay. And then you've got to pick two others. Right. Okay. And there is like one, two, three, four, like eight, kind of, I don't know, about yeah. 16, roughly. 16, yeah. Different ones. One of them is basically an affiliated league. Okay. And you essentially get all the benefits of one of the others. So right. you could essentially have the greater Uthan League yes. rules, but you wouldn't be able to take the name character, mm -hmm. and you could take it the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, for yes. example. <laughs> you could <laughs> call it that, yeah. but pick all the rules from before, stratagems and everything else. Yeah. However, what you wouldn't get is obviously that greater Uthan League yeah. keyword you need to unlock the character. Yeah, cool. And All if right. you chose this one, you wouldn't get any of the others that are on this no. page, these two pages. It's like it. a one in done. Yeah, cool. But there are some really cool ones here. All right, tell, tell me your favourite. Okay, because a lot of the bullet points we've already seen before. Yeah. But there's a really cool one here. Now, the Ancestral Judgment I'd go for, and I was really torn. We went back and forth on it, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. When you've got a Judgment token on you, okay. I can get exploding sixes to hit. In melee. In melee, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Or I could have plus two to my charge result. Yeah, that's a really tough one. Um, so I'm a big fan of the plus two charges because the army can feel quite slow. Yeah. Um, but the exploding sixes, I mean, you can't complain about extra hits. You can't. Um, very nice, both combat orientated. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like them. I like them both. It's a shame you can't take both. No, it is a shame. Um, but it pairs really, really well with this yeah. next one called a war song. Okay. okay. Now, when I've got two of my units in combat with you, mm -hmm. so I could have like a unit of berserkers. Yeah. And then I just charge in with a unit of bikes. Cool. Okay. Both. They've both got the core keyword. Yeah. And then I would get rerolls to hit with both of those units. Okay. That's pretty good. That's really strong. That's pretty good. So in combat, re-roll hits for units that is in combat with two other units of mine. Yeah, very good. All right, very so good. I can kind of dictate where yeah. that happens. Then the other one I really like is when, I, when I'm when i under starting strength, yep. like we've seen before, plus one to hit. Cool. Because now I can have, providing I'm under that starting strength, I'm yep. hitting on twos. Yep. I'm re-rolling all of my hits and I'm getting exploding sixes. So I may as well fish for more sixes. That's a lot of hits. That's a lot of hits. That's yeah. a lot of hits. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And you might find that actually reroll hits is enough hitting on threes and you want the extra to charge. Maybe yeah. that's the most efficient combo. And we don't quite know that yet until we get on the table and try it out. Absolutely. Yeah. To cover the rest, as we said, um, some of them you will already have seen because they're one of the bullet points from the previous named leagues. And they often are a little bit weaker than we've already seen as yes. well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then some of the other ancestral judgments, you can get judgment tokens on people for shooting you, judgment tokens on people if you shot them and they didn't die. Yeah. Um, various other ones. There's like a beam focus one. Yeah. Uh, there's some really interesting and really cool ones here and you could go lots of different routes with these. So yeah. definitely jump in and explore some options. Yeah, I love it. Right, we've skipped over stratagems for now because they're obviously going to lead into a lot of keywords which we're going to see during the data sheet section. Yeah. What we do have is the Votanic Council. Yes. These are paid upgrades. They'll cost you power. They'll cost you points. Um, and I believe you can only have one of each one. They're sort of a unique council. If you imagine your league, you got these guys in charge of it all. Yeah. We have a High Carl. Yep. We have a Lord Grimnir. That's your Psyker guy. And we have a Brokeer Forge Master, who is obviously your repairs, your mechanic, yeah. that guy. Okay, so Steve, let's talk about the High Carl. Yeah, so it costs 40 points for this upgrade. Okay. Okay, now the first thing to note is that, you know, earlier we said you can only take one Carl in an army. Mm -hmm. Well, you can take one Carl in your army and you can also take a High Carl. It then means you could potentially take two in yeah. your army yeah okay nice. now you gain a special ability and that means you can pick one of your core units okay and you can give it full rerolls to hit in both shooting and the fight phase 
But there also says the character keyword there as well, so you can give character or core rerolls to hit, and that's really powerful. <laughs> that is very strong. Yeah. Okay, I can definitely see myself investing in this. You absolutely have to, especially when you're looking for those, you know, judgment token hits. Yep. Okay, do we get anything else? You do, you get something called an ancestral judgment. Okay. Now what this means is when my high Carl model destroys an enemy unit that has a judgment token on it, yeah. I can look at someone else and give it a judgment token. So much judgment. And because I have a high Carl, yeah. he gets the access to take this warlord trait. So he doesn't right. gain this warlord trait immediately, you have to okay. pay for it still. Um, and it's called experienced eye. When I pick a unit, I can also pick another unit to have a judgment token on it. Okay, so in your command phases, you pick someone you can see, you give them a judgment token, you see another one, yeah. you give them one as well. Yeah, and Uthan the Destined is a high Carl. He has all of these abilities, and he has, if he is your Warlord, he has this Warlord trait. That's one of, and he actually gets two Warlord traits. This very is cool. one of them. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, um, I like the high Carl. Probably definitely going to take him. Yeah. What about the Lord Grimnir? So Lord Grimnir in the army, he gains an ability that allows him to cast an additional power. Very nice. So he's a better wizard. He's a better wizard. Cool. Yeah. All right. So a little bit more efficient on the tabletop. Then his Ancestral Judgment, when there is a unit within 18 inches with one or more Judgment tokens on them, mm -hmm. then I get plus one to my Psychic Tests. Nice. Which is pretty nice. good. That's, that's pretty handy. Yeah. Okay. And then he unlocks a Warlord trait. What does that do? That's it. I can add six inches to my powers. Providing it's from the ski skein wrought discipline. That's the one. I'm sure there's different ways of saying it, but it's basically their psychic power yeah. tree. Okay, cool. So you get an extra cast. Plus one to no, cast. Plus one to cast, probably, in most situations. Yeah. And if you take the warlord trait, you get plus six inch range on your powers. I and think we'll, it's all right. It's all right. We'll look at the powers in a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he seems okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the final one, we've got the Brokir Forge Master. Yeah. Broken Forge Master, maybe, some might say. Broken Forge Master. <laughs> so, Steve, tell me about this Broken Forge Master, then. Okay, so for this measly 25 points, this is what I'm getting. Okay. All right. The first of many abilities I'm going to get yep. is when I use a War Gear Stratagem, okay, mm -hmm. and it's once per battle, Okay. I reduce the cost by one. Right. Providing the unit that used it is within six inches. That is the one sort of limitation on it. Okay, fantastic. Uh, stratagems, uh, if you don't know, they're all sort of put in different categories and you'll be able to read just under where it says the cost of the name of the stratagem, yeah. what kind of stratagem it is. And a war gear stratagem, it will say war gear stratagem. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. It's great, especially because they're a, a, like a rare scarcity, right? Yeah. So that's good. Ancestral judgment, what do we get? Okay, so when I'm targeting a unit with a judgment token on it okay and any units that hit with a beam weapon that i have okay that also have a judgment token on it okay instead of damage i right. inflict mortal wounds so if i do damage two if you've got a judgment token on you you take two mortal wounds instead of the damage characteristic okay and that's on an unmodified wound roll of a six yeah okay so, you hit me with a weapon. Yep. All right. And we, let's say we use the judgment token. Yep. And you've rolled a six to hit. Yep. Becomes a six to wound. Yep. Fulfills the criteria for this. Mm hmm. And you've got a damage two weapon. Yep. That's just two more wounds. Yes. Now, his weapon also is a grav weapon, which means that on a unit that has a three or better armor save, okay. I increase the damage to three. So against like a Space Marine that's got a 3 plus save, I right. do 3 mortal wounds. Okay. And my weapon has 3 shots. So if I was really lucky and rolled 3 sixes yeah. to hit, or if you had 3, three judgment tokens on you, yeah. and I rolled a 4, a 5, and a 6 to hit, yeah. then straight away with this ability, I'm going to do 9 mortal wounds. Okay. Sure. It's good that, isn't sure. it? Sure. That sounds a bit broken, doesn't it? That's quite good, that, yeah. <laughs> and then, in addition, if it's a beam weapon... Yes. ...and it passes over units that have judgment tokens... Yeah. ...they would also, on the six, to wound... Yeah. ...take mortals. Yeah. But you have to roll that, because obviously yeah. the, you only ever roll a, a wound roll with a beam weapon. Yeah. And we'll show you that later. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. What about the warlord trait that he unlocks? 
okay, this is also amazing, I think. Um, the first part of it is when I can heal a unit, mm -hmm. all right, um, I do a flat three wounds back to my unit. Very good. Okay. Now, if I've got one of my little friends, my kind of ECOG assistant models, mm -hmm. you have four wounds back. I just have four wounds back. Just four wounds. Yep. Um, and then there's another bullet point. Okay. Now, basically, this is like a kind of support unit. So if I've got a vehicle unit or exo frame model within right. six, okay, and the exo frame, are like the heavy support guys, massive guns, yep. then when a damage is inflicted on me, okay. to one of those units, I can turn it to a zero, the damage. Right, okay. So I fired a LAS cannon. Yep. Um, at an exo frame unit or a vehicle that's within six inches of this guy, you failed the save. Yep. You're just going to change the damage to zero. Yeah, so it would have been six, and I'm going to go, no, no. zero. Zero. No. no. And it's not even the first failed one, like sometimes it's worded as. This is when A. So I can basically pick that you got a melter, loads of damage, going to change that to zero. That's not very nice. It's very I, good. I don't like this guy. You absolutely he, he need can it. go. He can yep. go. Goodbye. Mm. Right, well, the Votanic Council sounds pretty good. Yeah. I think good. we're looking at High Carl and probably the Forge Master. And if we're feeling spicy, the Lord Grimnir as well. You've got 25 points left over, but you're definitely spending at least 65 on the High Carl and the Broken Forge Master. Yeah. Very good. All right, well, let's have a look at what's next. On to relics now. How do we put relics on our characters, Steve? Okay, so obviously you can spend a CP from the mission book where you can basically give one of your non-named characters what we call a relic or a yep. kind of piece of war gear um now there are there is a stratagem as well okay. that allows you to if we're playing a strike force game yep. give two other characters mm -hmm. a relic very nice so you can't double stack it but you can give two different ones yep there's also a stratagem mm -hmm. that allows you to give a relic and it, they are listed as to which ones you can take yep and you can give that to kind of like one of your sergeants of the unit as well. Very cool, like a little epic hero leading a squad. Yeah. Very, very good. There's quite a few relics here, Steve. Yeah. Um, let's pick five of our favourites. Okay. Okay. So what's your first choice? These are in no particular order. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, I will do it. My top one. Yeah. <laughs> it is the massive hammer, the extractor. <laughs> okay. Um, and basically... If I roll, it yeah. replaces my hammer. Yeah. If I roll a six to hit, okay. you suffer D3 plus three mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. That's, um, and that's, this, that's a lot of mortal wounds. <laughs> this replaces a mass hammer, which is on my champion. Okay. So let's say I've got full rerolls to hit from the high Carl. Yeah. I roll my four or five attacks, depending on what type of uh, yeah. I've gone for. And uh, any sixes to hit are just D3 plus three mortal wounds. So strong. That's really good. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, and its its stats are the same as a normal mass hammer? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So times two strength, minus three AP, D3 plus three damage. That's really good. Yeah. Mortal wound output, fantastic. What's next? Okay, next up is the Arctal's Fortress. Okay. And basically... Bringing a whole fortress. That's it, he literally is. This is just... Shield crest model only. Yeah. Okay. So this can be taken on a Carl or a champion. Okay. Basically, at the start of the fight phase, I can select one enemy unit within three inches of the bearer, and that unit is not eligible to fight until all other units have done so. So this basically changes the order in attacks. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you're charging me, yeah. then I can make you fight last. Okay. Which then puts us on the same level. Yeah. Which actually means I get to fight before you. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. If I charge you, and I put this ability on your unit that mm -hmm. I've just charged, there's a certain stratagem you wouldn't be able to use. Yeah, yeah. And so, that just means it stops you from kind of interrupting my combats. Yes. So again, that's kind of how that... Very, very powerful. powerful. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Reasonably rare in the game as well. Yeah. So um, definitely one to watch. Do we have your next choice, sir? I do. Okay. So this one is the Murmuring Stave. I can put this on a Grimnir, and this stacks really well with a High or Lord Grimnir. Mm -hmm. You know an additional power, so you normally know two. Okay. This allows you to know three and then yeah. cast three. Yeah. Okay. Or it allows you to, in your psychic phase, mm -hmm. you still that you still know that additional power, giving you a bit more flexibility. 
but you can perform a psychic action and then cast one other power. Uh, okay. Because okay, normally you cast a psychic action and you're done. Yes. All right? You can't then continually cast psychic powers. Yeah. This means you can do an action, still do a power. Mm. And psychic actions, in case you don't know, yeah, they're ways to score points in the game depending on what mission book you might be using. Yeah. Um, you might want to do a secondary to score points. You need to do an action. Yeah. Usually, as you say, you can't do any powers in addition. Um, but if you've only got one of these guys, you want him to do other stuff too. Great bit of utility. So that's fantastic utility. Yeah. Yeah. What's our next choice? Okay, this is called the Warp Strike, and actually you can give this to one of those sergeants. Um, what I really love about this is if you put on a champion, it makes the bearer, when he makes a normal move, advance move, or fall back, or charge, you can basically move horizontally through friendly or enemy units, so it cool. stops him from getting like blocked in. Yeah. You know, it allows him to kind of fly or teleport around the table, yeah. which is really cool. And then once per battle, there's a stratagem, mm -hmm. which normally costs a certain amount of CPs. Yeah. And for my unit, it costs zero. So I can just do it for free. Wow. And then there's one other bullet point to this. Okay. If you want to bring your reserves in, yeah. normally you have to be over nine inches away from me. Now you have to be over 12 inches away. Okay, that's pretty significant because you can only declare a charge if you're within 12 inches of an enemy unit. Yeah. Which means this guy, you can't declare a charge against from reserves. Or my unit. Or the unit. Which is really good. Or the model in the unit, yeah. yeah. So again, Fantastic. really, really powerful um, relic there. Right, and our last choice for our top five. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to go on our broken Forge Master. <laughs> um, okay, so... Its stats, at first glance, look exactly the same. Okay. All right, so it's Hunter 3. It's basically three shots at 18 mm -hmm. inches. Strength 5, minus 3, 2 damage. Right. Against a char saving characteristic of 3+, plus. it's 3 damage instead of 2. And this is this is replacing a Graviton rifle yeah. on our, our Iron Master guy. Yeah. Um, and as you say, this looks exactly the same. But there's one word added, and it says beam. Beam. Yeah. So remember earlier we spoke about how I can hit a unit and mm -hmm. it can do like loads of mortal wounds if yeah. I roll a wound to s of a six. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Now it's a beam. I can also then hit other units. And remember, I've got three shots with this guy. Oof. Oof. Very powerful relic. Wow, okay. So you could do a lot of more wounds here. A lot. Um, to multiple units. The beam's yeah. going over. That's really, really powerful. So there are top ones, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well... Let us know which relics you're looking at, guys. Yes. Uh, these are going to be very, very interesting to see on all of the different characters. Well, we've given some fancy relics out to some of our characters. Now it's time to see what we can do with some Warlord traits. Yes. So, Steve, take us through how you get a Warlord trait on your characters and who you can give them to. Well, obviously, when you're creating your army list, you need to nominate one of your characters in your army to be your Warlord. But you don't have to give them a Warlord trait. Okay. So... In, in the film mission book, you can there's a CP stratagem in there where you can nominate one of your characters to have a warlord trait. We've obviously already covered some yep. through the council or some of the custom leagues have you know specific ones, but this is the generic table which anybody can kind of get access to. Um, and then there's also another stratagem in the book that allows you to take characters and up to two more with warlord traits. Okay. All right. If you're at a strike force level game, uh, which is basically two thousand points. So. Essentially, we can probably take up to three maximum of these. All right. All right. Now, there is one thing to note. The named character, Ulthan the Destined, he gets that experienced eye warlord trait, yeah. which is the one we mentioned earlier, where you can pick two units to have a judgment token on him. And he also gains the ancestral bearing warlord trait, which is the first one on this list. So we'll cover that one first. Cool. Awesome. Well, what does it do? Well, basically, what this allows him to do is extend his aura out by three inches. Nice. Up to a maximum of 12 inches. Okay, and what is his aura? So his aura is reroll ones to hit. Okay, so nice. if you're in nine inch range, then you're going to get benefit of those, those aura buffs. Okay. Um, there's another bullet point. You can also extend any command abilities up by three inches as well, up to 12. And for a Carl, that is... Um, so essentially... For a Carl, a high Carl can pick any unit then within nine inches to get full rerolls to hit. Very nice. Yeah. So this Very can nice. this is going to work really well on essentially a high Carl model. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So if you've got a high Carl model, definitely consider ancestral bearing. Yeah. All right. Next we have Warrior Lord. Yes. So what does this do? Okay, this one is fantastic. Okay, this is a first of all a very combat heavy 
warlord trait. Mm -hmm. You want to definitely put this on your combat champion. Yep. For sure. You get to re-roll the wound roll in combat. Very nice. Yeah, just for this model, obviously. And then also, any damage your opponent has to take, mm -hmm. they can't use any rules whatsoever to try and ignore it. Right. So, for example, if you've got a feel no pain, we mentioned those earlier, where yep. you kind of get a save after your armor save yep. to shrug off those wounds, you don't, you're not allowed to use those. Ouch. And there's one more thing. Yep. You know, like some of those really powerful characters like the Catan, mm. the Bloodthirster. Baden the Despoiler. They've got what we call a wounds cap, yep. where they can only take so many wounds in a certain phase. Yep, they do. Yep. This guy doesn't care. What? You're going to take all the damage. Yeah. Oh dear. So, the characters, you better start running scared if you've got a wound cap, because you're not safe against the Warrior Lord. All right, and to put this into perspective, if you had, let's say, a hammer on yep. your champion, well, how much damage is that? I believe it's D3 plus 3. D3 plus 3 damage, and you can't get any of your shrugs, feel no pains against it, and no. you don't get your wound cap against it. No. That is nuts. So I think we're definitely looking at this on a champion. Y you could take this on the guy that ignores invun saves with that relic as well. That'd be pretty cool. Oof. No saves whatsoever. Yeah, that's... Um... Straight through. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Well, we've got a long list of Warlord traits to get through, Steve. So what's our next Warlord trait? It's called a long list. Ah. Huh. Yeah, and we actually have a long list of rules. So, get, grab a coffee. This one's going to take a while to get through. <laughs> so the first part of this Warlord trait basically means when I shoot you, okay. you don't get any benefits of light cover. Right. So imagine this on the Iron Master. Okay. No light cover now, with this really powerful grav gun, which maybe might even do more wounds in addition, if you've taken that ability. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing as well with this is if a character has a judgment token on it, mm -hmm. you can ignore Lookout Sir for it when you target it. Right. So it allows it to become targetable. That's cheeky. It is, but remember, in order for the, you to be able to, for that to happen, mm. the character needs to have either killed something, yep. done an action, done a psychic action, or um, you've been able to see it earlier on with a high Carl who's got a certain ability to give right. it a token. So, situational, but, you know, it could be pretty clutch against some psychic characters, like a yeah. warlock that's going around trying to do psychic actions. Yeah, it could be, yeah. It could be really powerful in that respect. But this is the best part. Right. Right, listen up, Michael. Okay, I'm listening. Okay. At the end of each phase, if any units, any of your units that had okay. a judgment token on them, yeah. that were destroyed by one of my league units, Okay. yeah, I can look at another unit and give it a judgment token. So many hard stairs in this list. Yeah. So you, just any? Yeah. So <laughs> any of my units? If that unit, I don't know, <laughs> over there has got a judgment token and I kill it, I can go, cool. Well, I can see that one. That can now have a judgment yeah. token on it. Yeah. So he's, he's got a long list. He's checking it twice. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I, I really like that last ability. Um, so this guy, maybe we're looking at putting that on our Broker Iron Ironmaster. Yeah. He can, he's got a good gun as well, just to make use of that first bit. But you could probably get away with putting this on someone else, just to make use of that last. You could. The, bit. Like the Grimnir, for example. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Very All cool. right. All right. What happens if we're a guild affiliate? That's our next Warlord trait. Okay, so this now means you can pick a unit within six inches, okay, okay, and you can make it objective secured. So right. we spoke about that ruled interaction earlier when we discussed the pioneers and the warriors, they get that innately, um, but now you could pick some other units like berserkers, or you could pick, uh, for example, the hearth guard, yeah. and they could get them. You can't pick characters, and also you can't pick your transports in your vehicles because they're not core. They yeah. don't have that core keyword, which is really important. Um, but really powerful ability, and if you pick a unit that already has it, mm -hmm. you count as one additional model. So, I've got a unit of six bikes here. Okay. They already have objective secured. Right. If I pick it from my ability, I can then make them count as two models. Very nice. All of a sudden, I'll count as 12. 12, yeah. That's not bad. It gets even better. If I was the Greater Ulthan League, that also has the same ability. So therefore, this would count as three models each. This unit would count as 18. This unit here would count as 60 models on an objective. So if you crammed 20 of these little guys onto an objective, yeah. you'd have 60 
of sick models on there. <laughs> if you were the great Ruthan League, yeah. You're the great and uh, guild affiliated. League. Yeah. And you're oh wow, that is um it's quite good. some pretty immense power. Yeah. Um now from a perhaps more competitive standpoint or more in-depth technical standpoint, um remember that when you score primary objectives, you score them at the end of your command phase. Yeah. So if someone's holding an objective and you've got a unit on it, you could potentially use this ability to make your unit count as more models and therefore take the objective from your opponent. Yeah. And that's the real power in abilities like these. So if you see them anywhere, watch out for them because they can be used um, to really nail the primary points. Yeah, it really can be. And it's one of the strongest, I would say, in the book. Yeah. Well, at the, at the studio, we're always going through unrelenting toil. Mm. Which is our next warlord trait. What does this do? Okay, so this is an aura. Mm -hmm. uh, again, within six inches of a core unit from the model with this warlord trait. Um, and basically, it allows my units to shoot yep. and still perform an action. Very nice. So I could retrieve Nephilim data, I could raise a banner, or I could you know, maybe plant a bomb. And all of these actions normally mean that you cannot then shoot. Yes. So this allows me to be more efficient. It's a bit of a tool in the toolbox because mm -hmm. obviously we want to be performing these actions to score us points when it comes to the mission. Yeah. So again, good bit of utility here because you don't want a 300 point unit no. of an infantry raising a banner and not shooting. It just means you can get a little bit more leverage out of your units. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. Right, next is Grim Demeanor. Yeah. What does this do? Well, the Grim Demeanor um, is an aura again mm -hmm. and uh, core units within six of the Warlord Basically, I ignore any or all modifiers to my leadership value okay. and any modifiers to for combat attrition. <laughs> so if I've taken some casualties, we get to the morale phase and yeah. maybe some of my guys are thinking of running away. I've got the grim demeanor warlord trait and I'm like, no, you shall not run away, basically. And uh, it's going to just be a really good way of just preventing you know, models from fleeing. So. Yeah. That's all right, I think, yeah. Reasonably useful on, on large 20-man units. Yeah. Um, okay, and the, the last three here, um, we didn't talk about specific characters that could be used on. I think they're more general ones. You could yeah. probably get away with putting them on anything. Yeah. Um, but as we've said, some of these earlier ones, you're probably focusing on specific characters. That's exactly it. I think kind of number one goes on a Carl. Number yeah. two goes on a champion. Number three probably goes on your Iron Master. And then four, five, or six could be, a, you know, those support kind of characters. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, well, next we're going to look at some mind powers yep. and see what we've got in the skein, skein wrought discipline. Let's look at the psychic discipline that the Leagues of Votan have. First of all, let's have a quick look at the character and how many powers he knows and casts. Yeah, so the Grimnir can take up to two powers. Right. Okay. And obviously, of course, I know Smite already, mm -hmm. so I can pick two of these in addition to what I already know, which is Smite. Okay, fantastic. The first one is Interface Echo. Do you want to talk us through that one? Yes, yeah, so this is actually a really good one, I think. Probably the one of the best for me. Um, it goes off on a five, so you roll two dice, and whatever you, the result of that will yep. determine whether it's passed or not. So if I've rolled a five or more, then I can get one command point for my army to use. Fantastic. Now this doesn't stop me from regaining any others from, let's say, a Warlord trait that we mentioned earlier from the Greater Thuran League. This actually will stack with it, and it's very rare we've ever seen that ability. Yeah, fantastic. So every psychic phase you could potentially get in a CP back yeah. on top of any others that you maybe got through other abilities. Really good. That's fantastic. Our next one's Fortify. I think this one's probably going to be a bit like how it sounds. Yes, exactly. And it's unfortunate that we're covering these two first because I'd say they're the best ones. Okay. Um, fortify, you pick a unit, a friendly core or character unit within 12, mm -hmm. okay, and on a six or more, it gains plus one toughness and it gets a six plus feel no pain. Okay, that's quite interesting. Plus, really... plus one toughness. Yeah. And then we've already talked about, um, the, I think they're called the, the Urani Suter yeah. guys. They're already plus one toughness, so you could potentially do plus two toughness. You could, yeah. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. You could get bikes on toughness seven with that stack. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But this ability on a unit of, you know, 20 guys yeah. um, basically makes them go up to toughness five. Mm -hmm. We can give them a five plus invulnerable save. They've yeah. got that void armor. Yeah. Um, and obviously a six plus feel no pain really makes them stick around for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a great power. Yeah. Right. Next, we've got um, a witchfire ancestral wrath. 
Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Basically, depending on the amount of models that you have, mm -hmm. will determine how many dice I roll. Okay. Um, and if you have a judgment token on them, can also modify the result of the dice I need. Um, but essentially, if I roll a four up, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I roll three dice on a four up. You take a mortal wound. Okay. And if I've got a judgment token on you, then it'd be on three. So maybe I would say this power does two to three mortal wounds averagely. Yeah. Um, it can target any models, so I could start targeting some characters. That could be quite good, yeah. Yeah, interesting. All right. Uh, and we've got another Witchfire next called Grudge Pyre. Yes. So what's this? Okay, so basically I can't select a vehicle or monster or character. Okay. That's one thing I can't select. Okay. But any other unit within 18 and up to 4, um, basically I roll 2d6 and add mm -hmm. the number of judgment tokens that you have on you. And if it's greater than that leadership value of yours, unmodified, then you can pick one of your models in your unit and you can destroy it. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yes. All right, well, I, it limited a little bit because you can't pick vehicle, monster, or character. Yeah. Um, but it is cast on a four, so really easy to cast. Yeah. Maybe on one, some, some elite but low leadership units, like um, maybe Orc Meganobs. Yeah. Potentially, you could just kill an Orc Meganob. Could work quite well. Might yeah. be helpful. Next, we've got Null Vortex. This is very strong. Mm. In certain matchups, very powerful. Goes off on a 8. Okay, so that's quite, a high cast. Yeah, that is a high cast. You're looking at something like a probability of a 46% chance mm. around there for this going off. Pick a unit within 12, okay. an enemy unit, mm -hmm. no invulnerable saves for that unit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No invulnerable saves for that unit. Yeah. It's not like you shoot with one of your units and you just don't get invulnerable saves against it. No. Like you you've just, got a big knight, yeah. no invun for you, big and knight. And your entire army shoots them and they don't have an invulnerable save. Yeah. That's brutal. Pretty brutal. That's yeah. brutal. It is, however, high cast value of eight, and they have to be within 12 inches of the Psyker. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Yeah. For uh, me, I'd be stacking that with the Lord Grimnar, mm -hmm. and then getting within that half range, so then I could get the plus one, so yeah. it then go off on a seven yeah. rather than an eight. Um, but again, you're kind of really mm -hmm. playing into, you know, the sort of the type of army. Otherwise, yeah. sometimes it's not yeah. going to be relevant. Yeah. yeah. Cool. OK. Um, and then the final one, uh, Malediction here, Crushing Contempt. Yeah. So this is OK. Um, probably wouldn't make my top picks. OK. All right. But might, you might find it really useful. Mm -hmm. Essentially what it does is you roll over um, a leadership value of your enemy models okay. um, and it can stop them from doing actions as well. So again, that can be quite good. Um, and if it's greater than it, then also I can subtract from the hit roll and things. So a bit of a versatility power, yeah. but yeah. not as hard hitting as the, no. the vortex or the power of fortify yeah. or the utility of the interface echo where you get a CP back. Fair enough. And with the Lord Grimnir. Yeah. I'm going to guess that the three powers you'd pick, because I think he knows another one, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, would be Interface Echo, yeah. Fortify, yeah. and probably Null Vortex. If I was going to Lord Grimnir, yeah. If you're going to Lord Grimnir. Yeah. However, I think what I'd actually do, hmm. if I was taking a Grimnir model, I would essentially take Interface Echo and Fortify. Yeah. They'd be my two I know. Mm -hmm. I'd also then give him the Relic to allow him to cast a Psychic Action yes. and then a Power, because this army's... And when we get into the mission play, mm -hmm. it is a little bit slower. Yeah. Unlocking the ability to do psychic actions for this army is really important for the, its mission play. Yeah. Um, so I'm only ever going to be able to cast one of these powers and do the action. Yeah. So I don't think I'll take the Lord Grim there. Um, but yeah, that's probably my yeah. optimal loadout I'd suggest you take. Cool. Nice. Excellent. Well, let's move on then. It's time to look at some data sheets. Yeah. Okay. Um, and on all of these data sheets, there's going to be a few little special rules. And let's have a look at those first so we know what we're talking about when it comes to individual units. Yeah, it's really important we do this first because obviously this is just going to tee up all of the units we then talk about. Yeah. Because all of those units are going to have some of or all of these keywords. All right, well, we've talked about Eye of the Ancestors, which is the placing judgment token. So we're yeah. not going to cover that again. Yeah. Um, we've covered that already earlier in the video. First of all, let's look at some weapons. Okay, so what are hunter weapons? Okay, so 
We've never seen a hunter weapon before. We've obviously seen pistols, rapid fire, heavy, assault. We know what they do in the core rules of the game. Yes. Hunter weapons, though, well, just think of this as a regular weapon. That's the easiest way of thinking about it. It's just a normal weapon. It's just, there's no special rules. Okay. So it can't be shot in engagement range unless you use a stratagem. Cool. Um, you can't advance and shoot it. Okay. You don't suffer any penalties for moving and shooting with it. Okay. Like you would with a heavy weapon. And um, You don't get any extra shots like a rapid fire weapon. You don't get any extra shots like a rapid fire weapon. So it's literally just, this is how many shots you get. And you can only shoot it if you just move. Or cool. stand still. Cool. Okay. All very, right. It's simple. actually very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I wish there were more hunter weapons in the game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next. Now, I wish there were less of these in the game. Um, this is the Magna Rail weapons. Um, so, what we've got: uh, hunter weapons replaces sort of the pistol, assault, rapid fire, etc. When you look at the weapon profiles, Magna Rail. Um, is sort of at the end, so that's like attached to it as a special rule. Isn't is it? its ability, yeah. yeah. Cool, okay, well, what, what, talk us through a Magna Rail weapon, Steve. Okay, so this is a Hunter 1 weapon, mm -hmm. so the, the 1 signifies how many shots you get. Cool. So Hunter 3 would be 3 shots, yeah. Hunter 1 is 1 shot. So 1 shot weapon, Michael, okay? okay? Now, the way that this works is each Magna Rail type weapon has mm -hmm. a different capability depending on how big it is. Yep. You know, kind of okay, you know, average on yeah. these little guys. Much more powerful on one of the big land fortresses. Oh, yeah, just okay on the yeah. little guys. All right. So how these work, Michael, yes. is that basically invulnerable saves can never be taken against it. Okay. All right. Do you want to very briefly talk us through these stats on a um, Hearthkin Warrior? Magna Rail Rifle. Okay, so I hit on a three okay. with this one-shot weapon. Yeah. And I'm strength nine. Oof, okay. Minus four AP. Okay. D3 plus three damage. Right. And you've just said that it ignores invulnerable saves as well. Yeah. So if you're a Terminator and you've got Armor of Contempt, mm -hmm. it becomes minus three, mm -hmm. so you're still going to get a five-up save. Yes. That's all right. But if you're like a giant Tyranid bug yeah. with a 3 plus armor save... You're not going to get a save at all. You're not going to get a save at all, and even if you had an invulnerable save from something, you're, you're not, not going to get, get that it. either. Nope. That's rough. It's pretty powerful. That's real rough. And, <laughs> okay. And D3 plus 3 damage, so a D3, when you roll the dice, a one or the result of a 1 or a 2 mm -hmm. basically means 1. Yeah. A 3 or a 4 basically means 2. And a five or a six essentially means three. So the maximum of damage it can do is six damage. Six, and the minimum is four. Yeah. But it's only one, st one shot, Steve. I know. So I'm just going to put ten dudes in front of you. Well, that's fine. However, if on a modified wound roll of a six, okay. then any damage spills over to the next model. Because normally, if you had a one wound model like this guy, um, take a six damage weapon, mm -hmm. he'd just be gone. And, yes. and all the other dudes would be fine, right? Yes. But this one, it's so powerful <laughs> that you could essentially kill six one-wound models. Have you ever he, seen Indiana Jones, the, the Last Crusade? I, I have he's seen He's on the tank and he fires the gun and yeah. goes through like four dudes. This basically what this That's does. basically what this does. Yeah. yeah. Now, we have seen this rule before. Mm -hmm. We've seen it on certain flails yeah. um, and combat weapons. So it's actually quite exciting to see this on a Magna Rail Rifle. Yeah, yeah that's very, very cool. Uh, and remember, this will stack with our Judgment Tokens. Yeah. So if you've got three Judgment Tokens on you, a hit roll of a four... Would count as a six count to as wound. a six to wound. The damage overflows, um, and of course, no invulnerable yeah. save. But Ouch. you never get an invulnerable save. Yeah. That's the first rule. And then the second mm -hmm. rule is on a six, the damage spills. Yeah. Okay? They're not... You don't need a six for Ouch. trigger both of them. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, um, that's a couple of the weapons. Um, we're going to cover beam weapons in a bit more detail with a little example for you yeah. guys, uh, and we'll show you that in a bit after we've discussed Steady Advance yeah. and Void Armor. So first of all, Steady Advance, what does this mean? Okay, so basically I ignore any modifiers to move characteristics or advances or charge rolls. 
Okay. Which is pretty good, actually. Because <laughs> very good. You know, you you know, you want to throw a, a grenade at me to make mm -hmm. me slower. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Just I'm, I can ignore all modifiers. But that's good because you only move five inches most of this stuff. So yeah. it, it's quite good that they've got this rule in there to mitigate. You don't want to get movement. caught on. You don't want to get caught on difficult ground, and all of a sudden you're moving three inches. That would be rough. That would be. So you ignore that. Now the next part, the steady advance part of this, is when I make an advance roll, mm -hmm. or an, I want to make an advance move. Yep. I don't roll a dice. Okay. I just move three, uh -huh. and that's across the entire army. Okay. Right. Okay. Yep. And I add six if I've got the accelerated keyword, which is bikers. Bikers, vehicles. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's about it. Okay, very nice. So they're still slow, even if you advance, they're still a bit slower than everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Um, but it's consistent. They ignore modifiers. So. And it is consistent, which yeah. I do like. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. It actually saves a lot of time. Yeah. Go to advance, eight inches. Fine. Don't need to keep rolling dice for each unit. How many yeah. shots do I make? It's a hunter weapon. It's this. There's no modifiers. That's it's actually very simple, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, void armor. Okay, void armor. First bullet point is you can never re roll the wound against me. So you've got Doom, like a psychic power, reroll wounds against you, cast it as much as you want, it's not going to really work. Yeah. Uh, we actually had this in the battle report when I played mm -hmm. against James, and if you haven't watched that, make sure you go and check that out. We'll put the link in the description below, and also you can check it out at the end of this video or on the link above. But basically, he tried to use a stratagem on me yeah. that allowed him to reroll wounds, uh... and I said to him, James, don't waste your command points. Keep them yeah. because it's not going to be have any effect whatsoever. Yeah. So again, um, and look, if you're at the tabletop and somebody goes to use an ability that would give them reroll wounds, do the sporting thing and just let them, you know, not spend that stratagem or you know, tell them to do a different psychic power. Yeah. You know, we don't want any gotcha moments. So um, yeah, yeah. But there's another point. We've okay. already mentioned this earlier. Basically, we reduce the AP by incoming attacks by mm -hmm. one as well. Okay, fantastic. And you can't reroll the damage roll against them either. That's quite effective as well, yeah. So if you've got like a vehicle. Yeah, forgot to mention that, yeah. Um, then, yeah. So that's... that would include CP rerolls. It's not going to be effective, yeah. Ouch. That's, yeah. that's really makes you quite tough. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Brilliant. Right. Well, let's talk about beam weapons in a bit more detail. Yeah. Steve, tell me how beam works. Okay, so what we've got is obviously our enemy here, the Chaos, and I've got my Votan model here with his beam weapon. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot my beam weapon at you, and I've lined myself up so I can basically hit lots of different units with my beam weapon. Very nice. We're going to draw a straight line between my model and my target. The target model is the Chaos Knight. Okay. I'm in range. Yep. And he's eligible to be shot. Yes. It's because, obviously, this obscuring building here, mm -hmm. which is over five inches, does not affect the Titanic model. No. And the point I measure to is the closest point of my enemy's hull. Yeah, very important. So I can't like pick a random place on it or a random model. It's just the closest point on the closest model is what I hit. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to resolve to see I hit this guy. Let's say I hit, I wound, I do some damage. Right. But because it's a beam weapon, I'm also going to hit all the other units that are in the way that would have been eligible for me to shoot at. Okay, well let's go through what some of these units are. Yes. So we've got a Chaos Space Marine unit here. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of in the ruin, one of them's right on the edge. So would I have been eligible to hit this unit? Absolutely. So they will get hit by the beam. Okay. And does it, or does a model, cross its path? Yes. Yes, it does. So they are gonna have to be resolved with the beam weapon. Yep. I've already hit. So I just need to resolve to wound yes. and then inflict damage. So after you've hit the Titanic Knight, you will automatically hit the other models if they were eligible targets. You just roll to wound against them. Yeah. Very nice. We've got a character here, but that line crosses over. Okay. But he's within three inches of a friendly unit that's also got three or more models. All right. So he's not eligible because of lookout, sir. Right, so he doesn't get hit no. by the beam because you couldn't have targeted him in the first place. If, however, there was only two models here, mm -hmm. and he's not within three of any other units, yeah. then he would have been eligible. But he's currently being blocked by the lookout circle. Okay. Okay. Next up, we've got the Dreadnought. All now, right. the Dreadnought, would I have been able to shoot the Dreadnought? No, because he's behind the footprint 
of the obscuring building. Okay. So the terrain is blocking the dreadnought, yeah. so I can't affect him, and I can't affect the character. So the only thing I can basically affect is the unit in front of me, which is the Chaos Space Marines. Very good. And that's how beams work. Excellent. It's data sheet time. We're going to see the characteristics of all of the models available to the leagues of Votan. You're going to see how well they move, shoot, etc. How many attacks. We've got all of their weapons lay laid out in, in there as well, and any abilities that they might have. Yeah. Um, it starts off. We're going to start looking at the HQ choices. Yep. Yeah. And we have the one and only Uthar the Destined. Yeah, now the data sheet is exactly like Michael described, all the rules on one page. And that's pretty much what the data sheet classifies as. You've got your statistics in terms of all those values, then all the weapons that they're equipped with. Mm -hmm. Then it will show you the weapon profiles, what they do, and then any other war gear and abilities that the models has. And then at the very bottom, you will see where it says faction keywords, mm -hmm. whether they've got character, whether they've got core. And that's really important. And the reason why we're covering this now is because when we get to the stratagems, yes. a lot of those are keyword locked. So we're going to cover what's got those relevant keywords now, so it's much easier to refer back to that. So Ulthar the Destined, the keyword he has is the Greater Ulthan League, which means he can only be taken in a Greater Ulthan League League. Cool. All right. Lots of leagues. All the leagues. He's leagues above the rest. And this guy really is. Um, he is really the, <laughs> yeah, the boss of is. bosses. So his weapon profile, he's got a, basically a Volkite Destructor, mm -hmm. like Hunter 3 does mortal wounds when shooting on modified rolls of 6 to hit wound. Really good. Okay, yeah, very his nice. His Blade of the Ancestors, um, it's certainly an old blade, but it doesn't, you know, lack the sharpness that you might expect. Still sharp. It's still sharp. Um, basically, on an unmodified 6 to hit, okay. you take two mortal wounds, and then the attack sequence ends, We've seen this with Celestine, yep. okay, but the difference is if you've got a Judgment token on, you take three mortal wounds rather than two, okay? That's good. gross. Yeah. That's really gross. Yes. Now, his other war gear, he's got the Rampart Crest. Okay. Okay, now, basically, it's an aura. Yeah. All right? And any units within six inches, okay. which are a Greater Ulfan Infantry mm -hmm. or League Biker, okay. all right? Um, gain a 5 plus invulnerable saved against ranged attacks. But this is the aura that can never be expanded. Right. Okay. Excellent. By any means whatsoever. And it, okay. it does explicitly say that as well. All right. And this one is common to other cars as well. Yeah. Um, if it has a rampant crest. If it has a rampant crest, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now, the next thing is it's got Eye of the Ancestors, Steady Advanced Void Armor. Okay. In pretty much all the data sheets those. have that. Okay. Um, then it's got reroll ones to hit aura. Okay. And that's just core units. Yep, within six, yeah. Then also the command ability, um, where you can pick a unit to have full rerolls within Very six. Because nice, he is a high car. You don't have to pay any upgrades for this guy. He comes as is as a high car. Yeah. It does, of course, mean if you take him, you can't take another high car. No. Um, and I'll be frank, you probably wouldn't want to anyway. This guy's so good. Yeah. Then you've also got the Destined, which is basically any time any damage is inflicted against him, it's just damage one. Okay, so okay. if you shoot me with a Magna Rail rifle, it's yep. just damage one. <laughs> um, I've got a four plus invulnerable save. Nice. I've got something called Grim Efficiency. Okay. All right, and then basically in my command phase, as long as everything's got the same keywords and everything, I can select one enemy unit that's visible, mm -hmm. and then... Basically, it can have a judgment token on it. Look at them funny. I can look at them funny, give them that grim stare. They can have a judgment token on them. Cool. Um, and if I've got my warlord trait yeah. from the high car warlord traits, yeah. I can pick two units. Very nice. And remember, he's great at all fan league, so I could spend the strat and pop it up to two. Yeah. So one can have one, one can have two for a CP. That was nice. Really good. Then I've also got Ancestral Fortune. Once per battle round, mm -hmm. so I can basically do this five times in an entire game. Yeah. Um, when I make a hit roll, a wound roll, a damage roll, or a saving throw for a friendly Greater Ulthran League units, that's any unit, vehicles, characters, you name it, it's anything, himself, within six, I can change the result to a six. And for any rules purposes, it counts an unmodified six. There we go, that lovely unmodified six. That mm. is amazing. 
Great for keeping units alive. Yes. Great for, you know, on a magna rail. In case you just want to make sure something's dead. Yeah. Or great on a hammer that might yeah. just do loads of mortal wounds on a hit roll of a six. Oh, we might have talked about that one earlier. Yeah. That would be quite good with this, wouldn't it? Mm. So that's that's the author and the destin. Okay, um, we'll, we'll look at the Carl next. Yeah. Um, U Uthar's a bit tankier, so he's harder to kill. Yeah. Higher toughness, higher strength, higher wounds as well, and more attacks. And more points. And, of course, more points. Yeah. Um, so next is the Carl. This guy, from what I can see, he's got the Rampart Crest. Yeah. He's got that grim efficiency to put a judgment token out. He's got a four plus invulnerable save. Yeah. Of course, he's got the Eye oh, of the Ancestor, Steady Advance, and Void Armor. Reroll ones. And the reroll ones are of six. Yeah. Um, now, there's a few other things you can do with this Carl. Do you want to talk us through maybe some of the other weapon options? Well, um, how you might kit him out? Yes, yeah, so you don't have the Blade of the Ancestors because that's special to Ulthar the Destin. Remember, you cannot give relics to named characters, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't be able to give a relic to Ulthar the Destin, and he would have to come with a Warlord trait that it specifies he yeah. has. But the Carl is open in terms of giving him relics and Warlord traits. So you've got a couple of options for shooting. You've basically got a Combi Bolter or a Volkite Disintegrator. And then in terms of combat, you've got the Mass Gauntlet or you've got the Plasma Axe. So it's actually pretty good, I would say. Uh, the Mass Gauntlet is flat three damage. There is a Relic as well you could take, which would change that up a little bit. Um, and also you could give it a Teleporter. Okay, so you'd lose your Rampart Crest, okay. but you could take a Teleporter. However, with the Teleporter, it also means like... It could just be set up anywhere on the table, mm -hmm. but you're going to lose that five plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks, yeah. and I think you're taking a rampart crest every single time. Yeah, it's very interesting. There is the league that has that invulnerable save on anything anyway. We're only so, with the two up though, really. Well, the two up gets the four up invulnerable. That's it? right. Everything else yes. gets the five up. Yeah. So maybe in that case, you want the teleporty guy, or maybe there's a specific build where you kit this character to jump out and kill people. Yeah. What is very important to note. Um, you need to remember that if you take the Rampart Crest, you get the Shield Crest keyword. Yeah. Uh, but if you take the Teleport Crest, you get the Teleportation keyword. Yeah. Um, and those will come in very, very uh, importantly in the Stratagem section. Yeah. Right, we've looked at the Carls. Okay, so we could take a High Carl and a Normal Carl. Or we could take Uthar and a Normal Carl. Yeah. Very interesting. Next, we have, I know your personal favourite, Steve. The Iron Here Champion. Yes, he is my favourite. Right. Why is he your favourite? Well, he's got an absolutely beast of a profile in terms of his combat potential. He's got either the Dark Star Axe or he's got the Mass Hammer. We've spoke about some of these weapons already in terms mm -hmm. of the relics you can give them. Mm -hmm. um, but the Dark Star, basically, you can make two hit rolls for each attack. Cool. So he goes up to eight attacks. In that combat build, he'd be on ten attacks. Nice. At strength six, minus three, one damage. It's quite good, and it you know gets around any like feel no pains and stuff. Yeah. Or you can take the mass hammer that times two strength minus three d three plus three damage, but it is minus one to hit though. Okay. Mm -hmm. He does have two options of war gear: the teleport crest, which again he can teleport in, mm -hmm. or he's got a wheel a weave filled crest, which gives him that shield crest keyword, an additional wound, and a four up invulnerable save. And for <laughs> me. I'm really torn between the two. I can see utility as to why you might have either or on this yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, now, basically, when he charges, okay. I can select an enemy unit and um, I roll 1d6. If the result is a modified 6 or it equals or beats the highest toughness characteristic in the enemy unit, you suffer d3 mortal wounds. So he goes in, Your does body checks wounds. someone. <laughs> yeah. He's also got an aura, which basically allows... Hearth Guard will cover those when we get to the elite section yeah. to reroll wound, wounds of one okay. to be rerolled. Nice. Um, and he is minus one damage because of his exo armor. And he's also got a ram shield as well, which basically he's minus one to wound. So he's minus one damage, minus one to wound, four up in one, six up save, two plus save. He's pretty tough. Five, six wounds. This guy is tough. He's a tank. Yeah. He's real tough. Yeah. Um, and then some important. Um, Keywords, we've got accelerated. Yes. Okay, so if we remember that gives you the six inch auto advance, that's quite cool. Yeah. Um, and then we've got exo armor, which will come in later. Yeah. Um, and iron here. So very, very interesting um, beast. Absolute He's good, beast. really good. All right, let's talk about beast of a different- I definitely wouldn't take three. You wouldn't take three. <laughs> let's talk about a beast of a different kind. We've got the Grimnir. 
Okay, so unfortunately we don't have one of those models uh, to show you, but um, we did use one of the battle report that we mm -hmm. kind of uh, used the counts as from Necromunda. Um, you get your Grimnir and you get those two core vests, those two kind of assistants. Cool. Um, and uh, unfortunately, because we didn't have the models and not out yet, obviously, in terms of recording this, you'll see yeah. in the battle report that we did, um, you know, we had to do the best job we can to show off some of these rules and things for you. You get a bolt gun, you get a stave, it's okay, um, but he gets a four plus in bun, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, you get plus one to combat attrition results within six as well. So he's a good little buffer character. Yep. You know, two powers, we've already spoke about those. And if I suffer a perils of the warp, um, I can just remove one of these little kind of assistants, off they go, yeah. and um, you know, I'm, I'm fine. So it's actually quite good at that point. Yeah, very nice. And if any of those cores are ever destroyed, then you don't consider them for morale purposes. Yeah. Which is good, because you don't want the Grimnir running away after a couple of drones of lobs. I know two powers, I can cast two, and I can deny one. Deny one. Fantastic. Um, now, important to note, he does have the Shield Crest keyword, yeah. uh, which will come up. And then the cores have the infantry, cog and corv keywords as yeah. well um so yeah very good but because there's a character in a unit even though the other models in that unit don't have the character keyword they still benefit from lookout sir yeah it's a very important thing to note yeah next we have the brokeer iron master yeah uh, we've talked about this guy a little bit in passing um let's look at what he actually gets you okay so he comes as a unit you get your um basically iron master mm -hmm. and then what you get is three ecog assistants okay and then one iron kin assistant so as well him and four of his friends yeah so basically a, a little five kind of model unit really isn't it yeah that's quite interesting it's quite cool now obviously we've already gone about over his profiles in mm -hmm. terms of his shooting abilities yep. That's his damage output. He does have a hammer as well, mm -hmm. but he's only getting three attacks, so it's not really much to write home about. However, he's got obviously all the keywords we'd normally come to expect, but this is the, his real power in the book. What he can give is a plus one to hit on a core or vehicle unit within six. Not just vehicles. This guy helps out his core friends as well. Yeah. So that 20-man brick of warriors hit on two. Yep. Pretty strong, I would very say. strong. Then what it can do is it can walk up to a exo frame or a vehicle and it can mm -hmm. heal it D3 wounds. Fantastic. And if I've got an assistant, it's D3 plus one wounds back. Okay. But Brilliant. as we already know, when we upgrade that, that literally goes up to just a flat four, flat four. if you've taken that wall or trait on him, which is from the like the higher um, council one. So yeah. Well, yeah, that is him in a nutshell, I think. Yeah, what, what's I, mean, not to like? I mean, he's good. It's very interesting because we've talked about the four HQ choices for the army. Yeah. And traditionally, in most armies, you know that you're probably only going to get three HQ choices. What do you so, take? What do you think you'd take, Steve? Okay, so if I was taking. A... And don't say three champions. Okay, so let me go from the start then. In a, <laughs> in a greater Uthan League, I'm definitely taking the Destined. Yes. I'm definitely taking a champion with mm -hmm. that mass hammer because mm -hmm. you can really get the benefits of Uthar the Destined's yeah. result to a six. Yeah. Um, and then it's I'm really torn between the Grimwyr, yeah. if I wanted a little bit extra mission play, yeah. that extra CP, yeah. or if I had some of the shooting guys that we'll cover later mm -hmm. and more vehicle builds, yeah. I'd put in the, uh, yeah. the Broken Iron Master. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, I mean, if we're looking at the box set that's come out that you'll have access to, yeah. um, we only get... Uthar slash a car you can make either yeah and we get the champion with different weapon options so those are your two hqs from yeah. the get-go yeah but of course you could convert up maybe a grimnir or a broke iron master yeah as well you absolutely could and if i was taking that combat build i really like i'm gonna have a high carl and then i'm gonna have two champions nice going straight in with that nice. yes we only have one troops choice for the leagues of votan yeah this is our hearthkin warriors you get 20 in the box set you can run up to 20 in a unit. Yeah. Do you want to talk us through some of the, the roles and maybe some of the loadouts you could do with these guys? Yeah, no problem. So again, we've got a Thion in this unit. Yeah, Thane, yes. A Thane, and we can give them a Relic. So that's an mm -hmm. option we can talk about later when we come to a Stratagem. Um, they have an additional wound. Actually nice. took me by surprise. I didn't realize they had. But this unit moves five inches. Mm -hmm. uh, your toughness four, four plus save without void armor. Leadership is... Eight. Okay. Not amazing, but it's all right. Now, in terms of your weapon profiles, you've got mm -hmm. two types. You've got the iron. It costs one more point each. Okay. 18 inch range. Yep. Strength five minus two, two damage, but one shot. Okay. Or you could take the bolter shot. Strength four minus one, one damage. 24 inch ranges. Mm -hmm. And it's two shots. Okay. So you've got more shots, but less 
lethal. Yep. Or one shot more lethal but shorter range. And it's more expensive as well. More expensive, yeah. Very interesting. Now, for every 10 models, mm -hmm. okay, you can basically take a Magna Rail rifle. Okay. You definitely take a Magna Rail rifle. You or <laughs> and or and you can take a missile launcher. Okay. And actually the missile launcher, on paper you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, it's all right, but it, it is actually very effective. Um, especially when you've got a unit 20, because you can obviously take two Magna Rails, two mm. rocket launchers. Yeah. It's Hunter 1, Strength 9, minus 2 D6 damage. Okay. Or there's a blast alternative um, against, you know, like Horde or whatever. But yeah. that Strength 9, minus 2 D6 damage really is great with, that, with the judgment tokens. Yeah, yeah. very so, nice. So I really like that. Very nice. um, you have some options for sort of some beam weapons. There's like a hunter beam weapon in there mm -hmm. um, that you can also take as one of those heavier options and you wouldn't be able to take the um, like Magna Rail or the rocket, yeah. but I like a kind of that designated unit at that strength nine profile yeah. to deal with yeah. higher vehicles. And I don't necessarily see the value in the beam so much because my ion rifles would do what the beam's gonna do. Right, okay. Um, then in that unit, you can upgrade your Thion to have a concussion gauntlet, give nice. it a few extra you know, good bit of, punch, bit of, punch. Bit of a, literally a bit of a punch. Yeah. And that is actually quite effective because he does get three attacks and the rest of the unit get two in each, which is quite good when you've got yeah. 20 models. Yeah, that good. is a good weight of attacks. Um, now, in the unit, providing that these models don't have either like a rocket launcher or they have a Magna Rail or any, any other special weapons, yeah. you can give one model a Medipack. And each of these are pointed upgrades. Okay. So a medipack means that you can you gain the medic keyword. Okay. We'll come on to a stratagem later for that because that's really powerful. Yeah. Like unbelievable. And every time, okay, you suffer the first failed save, yep. then you can just change the damage to zero. Okay, nice. Yeah. So first failed save every turn yep. is zero. Yeah. You basically save a model each turn. Yeah, basically. It's nice. pretty good. Um, then you've got the multi-wave comms array. Mm -hmm. I can still get my Carl ability. Right, and that's the reroll ones. To hit. Yeah, fantastic. If I'm within 24 inches. Okay, that's nice. Of my Carl. That's nice. Yeah. You can, you can, because obviously you only really get one Carl. Yeah. And so it's nice to be able to have that on multiple units wherever they are on the board. Yeah. That's and as long good. as one, as long as this model's within 24 inches, mm -hmm. you're going to get that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. All right. Um, it's actually the unit, so it doesn't even necessarily need to be that model. It's yeah. As long as he's in the unit, you could string him back, actually. Yeah, so yeah. it makes it a little bit easier and less clunky when you're playing, which is good. Yeah. Then finally, you've got the pan spectral scanner. Okay. You get the scanner keyword. All right. That's really good as well. Really important for that one. Um, and basically, you do not get the target. You, the target, the attack, doesn't get any benefits of light cover. Wow. So your 20-man unit could ignore light cover. Yeah. You can save a model each turn and you can be 24 inches away and still get your reroll ones ability from your car. That's it, yeah. That's very nice. And there's a lot of different weapon options here. Yep. Just to reiterate, for every 10, um, you get an option of two out of a list of four different weapons. Yeah. So at 20, you could have a total of four special weapons, but only a maximum of two of each different kind. Yeah, you can't take four Magna Rails, unfortunately. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Next, we have the Iron here Half Guard. These guys look pretty beefy. Yeah, Terminator equivalent models. Okay. Now these guys, you can take a unit of 10 of them. We're in the elite section now of the yeah. army, okay? Um, so you can normally in a battalion take up to six elites. Potentially, yeah. I think taking three units of this could be good. Um, you can take up to 10, they get their toughness five, two wounds each, two plus save. Okay. All right, they've got that void armor, which is obviously pretty decent. Um, now, in terms of their weapon profiles, yes. you've got a couple of different options, okay? okay? So, you can either take a teleporter crest in terms of your war gear, yep. or you can take the um, wee field crest. So, the teleporter gives you the teleporter keyword, yep. and then obviously the wheel, uh, the wee field crest gives you the shield yep. crest keyword, and there are some other abilities there. So, the, the bearer mm -hmm. uh, gets a four plus multiple save and an additional wound, mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty good. Um, and that's only on the sergeant yeah. of the squad. So the actual weapons themselves, though, I want to give a massive shout out to the Volkai disintegrator weapons. Okay. That's my that's my top pick. Yeah. There are a couple of different grenades and stuff you could use, plasma guns, but for me, the Volkai is what you want. Okay. It's Hunter 3, it's Strength 5, 0 AP, 1 damage. That doesn't sound that good. No, range 18. Okay. So, unit of 10, 30 shots, Michael. Yeah. 
Full rerolls to hit because I've got the core keyword from my high Carl. All right. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, a modified hit roll of a six inflicts one mortal wound on the target, and the attack sequence ends. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good with full rerolls to hit. Six is to hit. Six is to hit. More wound. In pretty a, strong. Uh, and, and then it, the attack sequence ends. Yeah, nice, I like it. You can like get it. a good amount of sixes out of that with yeah, full rerolls. Absolutely. Especially when you can turn a dice to a six as well. Yeah. So I really like that. Yeah, nice. Now this is a hit roll, so it doesn't basically stack with mm -hmm. with the the judgment, judgment token. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. that would get a bit crazy. That would get pretty crazy. Because it'd be on fours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit crazy there. Um, now we then got some different combat weapons. Mm -hmm. um, I just think the concussion gauntlets that you get. Uh, plus three, minus two, two damage, really good profile. Nice. Um, or you can take a gauntlet, which gives you an extra attack, the plasma grade gauntlet. Um, sorry, the plasma blade gauntlet, but I really think you want the concussions. For Very me, nice. that's the best profile. Very nice. Because then you've got the strength eight, minus two, two damage. Mm -hmm. Really good profile for attacks. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it, aside from one last thing, because they're exo suits, they're minus one damage as well. So okay. a little bit more resilient. Yeah, so resilient, hit hard in combat. And they can do pretty good damage at range as well. Yeah. Um, and they're very survivable with that two plus save. And of course, their void armor yeah. and their exo armor as well. Very nice. Um, I like these guys a lot. I do as well. Yeah. We have the Chthonian Berserks next. Yeah. These guys, not as much armor by the looks of it. No. Um, they look kind of crazy with their big plasma axes. Yep. What do these guys do? So this is a very designated combat unit. Mm -hmm. You're going to get three attacks a model. Okay. okay. Strength five, toughness five, two wounds. Difference here, you're getting a six plus save. Not great. However, mm -hmm. what you do get, Michael, is a five plus feel no pain. Okay, very nice. And then against one damage weapons, that gets a plus one to the result. Right. So you essentially get a four plus feel no pain. Okay, so you'll get your sort of six plus save. And yep. then, of course, if you've got any way in the army of getting a five plus invulnerable, yep. that would work quite nicely. Would work really well. And then you get your feel no pain as well. Yeah. So reasonably durable. They're okay, yeah. Now, a couple of things here. One of them can take a mold grenade launcher. Okay. And you gain what's called the subterranean keyword. Okay. There's a stratagem that, you know, we can talk about later yep. in regards to that. The heavy plasma axe, let's talk about that, though. Mm -hmm. You've got a strike or a sweep profile. Yeah. So you can basically be strength six, minus three, two damage with a strike. That's with three attacks. Or you can sweep it. Strength five, minus three, one damage, but you okay. roll two dice per attack. Okay. So you get six attacks per model. Nice. Yeah. So if nice. you had a unit of 10, that's 60 attacks. That's a lot. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay because they seem pretty easy to kill. So I'm just going to charge them, kill them real quick, and then uh, deal with the rest of your army. That's a good idea. But the only issue is there is that when you charge me and fight me, mm -hmm. or if I haven't fought, and you kill me in combat, I still get to activate and fight. I basically got a fight on death. Yeah. What? Yeah, I got a fight on death. That's not fair. That's just inbuilt. I can just do it. That's not fair. Yeah, they're real berserkers. They go down swinging. They go down swinging. They yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I like it. Um, quite hard hitting. Great into sort of your normal space marine profile. Yeah. With those axes. Um, yeah, really like these guys. And they have got that core keyword as well, which is great. Yeah, awesome. It's the fast attack section now, and we kick off with the Hernkin Pioneers. These are the cool grab bikes that you get in the starter box set. Yeah. Um, we remember, of course, these guys get that objective secured keyword. They do. So on top of everything that's in their data sheet. So do you want to run us through maybe some different options, how big the units can get for these guys? Yes, yeah, so you can say unit of six. Um, and like with the Warriors, you've got some really cool upgrades mm -hmm. for the unit. So the first thing I want to talk about is they are movement 12. Okay. And they have the fly keyword. Right. They have the core keyword. Yeah. They have the accelerated keyword. Right. They've got void armor, all the other stuff, but they've got something called ranger outriders ability. Okay. After you've deployed your army, yep. and after I've deployed mine, yep. I can pre-game move this unit up to 12 inches. Oh, wow. Nine inches away from you, ending, yeah. but really good, powerful ability. That's really, really good. I mean, off the bat, this super fast unit yeah. that has that objective secured, all that good stuff, this is a really, really strong mission play piece. It really is. So you need to look out for this. Yeah. They come toughness five stock with mm -hmm. three wounds with a four up save. 
they actually put out a lot of shots. Yeah. Because they've essentially got a Magna coil auto cannon built in. Okay. So that's three shots. Yep. Strength seven. Yep. Minus one, two damage. Nice. So a little unit of three, that's nine shots at a good profile. Yeah. One of those weapons can be, or one of the bikers can still keep it and then upgrade to also have like a rider on the back with a massive yeah. gun, the rotary cannon. That's nine shots. Okay. Strength six, minus two, one damage. So very similar profile. Yeah. So it roughly puts your unit at like 18 shots. Yeah. At a very good kind of light infantry killing unit. Yeah. But it gets better. You also get bolt shotguns. Mm -hmm. Two shots each. Strength five, minus one, one damage. Okay. So another six shots coming in from that. Yeah. There's okay. A lot of guns here. Yeah. You can take what was called a roll bar searchlight. Okay. This is the five point, uh, I believe, upgrade. Yeah. And you basically get the searchlight keyword and I ignore dense. The searchlight keyword is what you want for me come to a stratagem though. Okay. Okay, so that's really important. The dense is kind of irrelevant yeah. because they're so fast so they can get around it. Yeah. You can also take a comms array. Okay. All right, so you can get that 24 inch aura of rerolls. Yep. Yeah. And you can get the scanner so you can ignore light cover. Okay. Here's the kicker though. If you take the rotary cannon on one of the guys, yeah. that unit or that model cannot have one of those three upgrades. Okay. So if you've got a unit of three, then you need to choose which one you want to upgrade. Yeah. Okay. But if you've got a unit of six, you could have all three options? You could have all three. And obviously you could still have two rotary cannons because you yeah. can get one rotary cannon per three models. That's very cool. So yeah. would you recommend a bigger unit then? I mean, there could definitely be a build with three units of six. You heard it here. All with comms arrays, the lot. Just give them the works. Get those army boxes, guys. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't leave home without three units. Yeah. Three units of three, I think, is a staple yeah, uh, in this army. Yeah. yeah. Because what I actually really like about them, they're actually really cheap. Mm. So you can leave them on your backfield objective and then, late game, move them off if you need to. Yeah. I think it's a mistake by throwing them away too early. Yeah. You want to save them until late game. I think they're absolutely fantastic. And what's really nice is that that um, army box set that everybody's going to have access to yeah. has these fantastic biker units in them, yeah. has the fantastic warriors we talked about, and of course those amazing characters as well. Yeah. So yeah, definitely get those guys because you're going to want them. And obviously a massive thank you to Games Workshop for sending us the box yeah. um, and also these the codex as well. So yeah. we wouldn't be able to do this content without that. So Games Workshop, thank you very much. Uh, the only other fast attack option here is the really awesome Sagittar. This is like a little transport, like a six-wheeled transport. Yeah. Um, what do we get when we take this guy? Well, you look at it on paper and you think, ah, I'm not so sure on this one. But mm. this is a little bit of ing like ingenuity. ingenuity. Yeah. Let me go over this. Okay. So it's only T7, nine wounds, three up safe, right? right. You, you know, it's fairly easy to kill. It can move 12 inches. Okay. Um, now, the transport capacity, you can take five models, just infantry, but you can't take the big dudes, basically. Right, so no exo armor, no, no exo frames. No. Okay. So berserkers, regular, hearth guard, whatever. Yeah. But you're probably thinking, well, Steve, you can only take a unit of ten. Mm. Right? How do you put five in there? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. You can take a unit of two of these. Oh, okay. Sagittar. Okay. All right. And what I can actually do mm -hmm. is split my unit in the deployment step. Yeah. Five in one, five in the other for my unit of 10. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. And then they stay separate units for the rest of the game. That is very cool. Very cool. That's like the only way. It is the only way to split a unit of 10. Into fives. Uh, little guys, yeah. Cool. You know, you could just jump out five over there, jump out five on your backfield objective, because then you're not like wasting loads of points, right? No, exactly. You could have four special weapons, right? No, two special weapons. Yeah. And put them in one five. Yep. And then the other five could go out and have the sergeant in maybe and hit things in combat. Yep. That's quite interesting. We definitely do that. Yeah. Now, it gets better. It gets better. Because they actually have got some more right guns. They've got a twin bolt cannon. It's like six shots. Strength six, minus two, two damage. Nice. And then there's like another weapon you can take like a, I really like the missile launcher. Okay. Heavy two, strength 10, minus three, uh, flat three damage. Yeah. So I quite like that. But the mounted assault rule, the one that allows us to split up our units, mm -hmm. imagine this, right? Okay, I'm imagining it. You take 30 fight on death berserkers. Um, I'm done, thank you, goodbye. Okay. Okay. Now normally you've got to put those in 10 man units. Yeah, and then I can just kill 10 in a go, they'll fight on death, and I'll be done with them. Yeah. Right. But what I'm going to do is put them into these mounted assaults. Okay. 
So then I've got six units of five. Right. Okay. How do you feel about that? I don't feel very happy about it. <laughs> um, now, I will just clarify. You, like, as it stands in matched play, yeah. you can only take three of any given data sheet, yeah. which is why we're not taking just six, uh, six units of five as it starts with. Yeah. And we have to take three units of ten. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to split them yeah. like a madman. Very mean, Steve. I mean, gonna it's going to cost a lot, right? <laughs> it's going to cost a lot. You're taking a lot of <laughs> Sagittar vehicles for this to happen. very cool, though. Yeah. Um, but you could even do it with just 20. Like, yeah. it's really effective. I think it's really good, um, yeah. I, I really like it, and it's nice to see a transport that have that kind of purpose. And utility, yeah. And utility, yeah. yeah. Awesome. On to the heavy support, the big guns, if we hadn't seen some big enough guns already. Um, the Brokeer Thunderkin. Yes. These guys are the big exosuits that have been previewed by Warhammer Community. Yeah. Um, they look very cool. Um, little stilts to make them a bit taller. Yeah. They fire their guns. Talk us through these, then. So this unit has something called the Exoframe keyword. Okay. You know earlier we spoke about the Broken Iron Master where mm -hmm. he can basically pick a unit yeah. and he can basically say, look, just ignore that damage. Yeah. And he can also heal these guys as well. Yeah. Okay. Now they get the Toughness 5 with 3 wounds each, 3 plus save. So relatively durable. Yeah. Now they've got something called Omni Visions, which basically allow yeah. you to ignore dense terrain. Yeah, nice. It's pretty good. Nice. However, they've got three different weapon options. Okay. You can take the Bolt Cannon, mm -hmm. so it's range 36, Hunter 3, 6 strength, minus 2, 2 damage. Okay. Okay, pretty good. No, not bad. And then you've also got the Gravitation Blaster, probably my awesome. favourite. Okay. Range 18, D6 shot, strength 5, minus 3, 2 damage. Yes. Against anything with a save of 3 up or better, then you get damage characteristic of 3. Okay. Ooh. Beautiful marine killer. They... D6 shots. Yeah, yeah. Blast with a damage three weapon. And I can take a unit from three to six in this unit. And they all get one. They can all have one, yeah. Wow. And then I've got, or, sorry, you can take one of these, the SP Conversion Beamer. Hunter one, strength seven, minus two, flat three damage, and it's a beam attack, okay? But each time an attack made with this weapon that is wholly more than 15 from the firing model, okay. you take an additional hit. Right. So hit you once, you actually get twice. You know, hit you twice. Yes. Strength yeah, cool. seven minus two three damage. Okay, but it doesn't hit the guys under it an additional time. No, because you don't just actually the hit target. Them. Yeah. 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 Cool. Because you only when we discuss beams, you only roll yeah. to wound. It's not you don't roll to hit. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. You can't score a hit. Um, these guys seem pretty strong, Steve. Yeah, they're quite good, aren't they? Those grav cannons <laughs> seem pretty insane, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit scared. Yeah. Um, because it seemed like there's quite a few combos. You could get your broke here. Iron Master given plus one to hit. Yeah. And, oh, oh God. What I really like about this is that actually all the data sheets we've discussed have use. Yes. You know, it's a very limited, I think there's 11 data sheets in total, mm -hmm. um, but all of them have got a use and you could have really great a, a time like, you know, using different elements and bringing yeah. it all together yeah. to have different types of builds and play styles, which is cool. I think you could buy multiple units of every single yeah. data sheet and you'd probably circle, go through all of them, and you'd enjoy every game. Yeah. And they're very, very cool. Yeah, I think so. Um, and they've got the core keywords, so yeah. fits in with the rest of the army. Yeah. Okay, right, well, let's move on to the final data sheet. The Land Fortress. The Land Fortress. Wow, this guy is um, meaty. Um, well, talk us through his uh, profile there, Steve. Well, he's movement 10, a little bit slower. Okay. Toughness 8. Yeah. 16 wounds, 2 up save. Wow. It's got that accelerated keyword. Yeah. Okay, now it can take up to 12 models, but each exo frame or exo um, armor mm -hmm. basically takes up to 2. Sorry, exo armor takes up 2. Yeah. Exo frame takes up 3 spaces. Okay. All right. Then you've got a whole host of weapons. Like yes. an absolute load of them. But I just want to really discuss one. Okay. Okay. Which one? The one I want to talk about is the heavy magna rail cannon. I just had a feeling that maybe <laughs> there was a, a bigger magna rail weapon in the book. This is a big one. And this, okay, right, what does this do then? Okay, so it's range 36. Yeah. It's only one shot, Michael. Oh, that's okay. Strength 14. Okay. Minus four. Lovely. Ignores invaluable saves. Yeah. 2d3 plus 6 damage. Now remember, the high Carl 
I can turn my hit roll to a six. Because you've got a judgment token on you, counts as a wound roll, any damage is going to spill. So that's a total potential of 12 damage. That could be 12 single models just picked up from this one. Can you imagine the shot? This las beam being so powerful, it hits the units and it just decimates everybody near it. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah. And very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But it's, that is scary. It's got a huge amount. Um, it's got the scanner keyword. It mm -hmm. ignores light cover. Um, yeah. And you've got a whole host of different weapon options here. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay. time to look at some stratagems. Now stratagems are these abilities you can activate during the game in various phases or in various circumstances yep. and you can spend a certain amount of command points which is the resource that you get during the course of a game. Now in match play um, you can only really use one stratagem of a specific name per phase so you can't use it twice in a phase. Yeah. Okay um, let's have a look at some of these Votan stratagems. I know you've picked out a few that you like. Yeah. Some are really strong and other ones affect certain units. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Let's kick off with the strong ones. Yeah, so these ones are pretty much generic across the board. Mm -hmm. Most of your units are going to get access to these. Okay. All right. Now, they're all going to vary like one or two CPs, depending on the strength of them. I'm not going to cover exactly what that is. Yeah. And I'm also not going to cover any ones that we've already spoke about, like extra wall yeah. traits and relics. But we're going to dive into the first one. This is basically, I can pick a unit that when I shoot it, is mm -hmm. targeting a unit that has a judgment token on it. Yes. And this is in the shoot or fight phase. Okay. I can basically reroll my hit roll against you. Pretty good. What? That's any unit. Any unit. If any you're shooting unit. someone that has one or more judgment tokens. Or hitting you in combat. Or hitting you in combat. Yeah. You can reroll all of your hit rolls. Yeah. Okay. And if I've got three judgment tokens, you could try and get as many fours as possible to just get through to that. Yeah. Counts as a six to wound. It's great. That is disgusting. Yeah. It's brilliant. Each time a model, so it's all of them. It's great. Right, okay, next up, this is for core though. Core units only. Okay. All right, there's a little bit, um, you know, two CPs, a little okay. more expensive. Um, in the fight phase, if your engagement range of two of my units, okay. you know, we had that interaction earlier with the customs. Yep. So two of my units for two CPs can reroll the wound roll against you in combat. But I've got to have two units engagement range with you, and they it's called kin bound. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Kin, kin bond. That's so you had the custom earlier where you had the same thing. Yeah. But reroll hits. So you could combine that if you want a custom league. Yeah. Reroll wins as well. Exactly. Nice. What's next? Okay. Point black. Point blank fusillade. Very expensive stratagem. Okay. Allows me to shoot into combat with my infantry or bikers. <laughs> it doesn't stop. <laughs> you can't even lock them in combat. They're just going to shoot you. <laughs> What? Yep. Cool. I don't like this. Yep. I'm there are now. some other kind of, um, you know, specifics, yeah. but very much acts like big yeah. guns have a tire. Yeah, yeah. Where so you like can minus shoot, one to hit. shoot into combat only yeah, yeah. against that, though, okay? Cool. Okay. All right. Next one. I'm going to save this one. We're going to move on to the next one, okay, because this is called family loyalty. All right. Infantry or biker unit can perform a heroic intervention as if it was a character. So at the end of your charge phase, uh, yes. you get within three of these guys, I can go, cool, I'm coming in for the fight as well and bring my entire unit Very with nice. me. Yeah. Very nice. And remember, um, you can heroically intervene into units that haven't charged. Yeah. So do be aware that even if you haven't charged your opponent, they can still heroically intervene. Um, and that is something that's often missed by some of the newer players in the community. It is, yeah. 1CP. Votan core unit. Okay. Fall back and shoot. This you need to watch out for. Um, this is one of those we teach on the academy to ask questions before a game. Um, quite often, the way to deal with shooty armies is to lock them in combat. Yeah. Um, so you need to ask, can you fall back? And the answer is yes. And shoot. And shoot. Yeah. Right. Okay. This one now. This depends on the amount of models that you've got in the unit. Okay. And this is only going to affect shield crest models. Right. Shield crest models are pretty much all your characters. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Then you've got the. Um, Hearth Guard yep. and the Warriors also have the Shield Crest keyword. Yes. Against ranged attacks, a one to three to wound fails when you attack me. Okay? It's too much. And this is in any phase. 
This is too much. So you could do it in Overwatch as well. This is too much. Yep. Stop it. Cool. Right, next up. We're now on to more specific unit ones, okay? okay? This is for the I... I can't pronounce that. Iron here. That's the ones. This is your champion. Yep. Or your Iron here hearth guard. That's it, yeah. Um, use this in the shooting phase, or I can use it in the fight phase. Yeah. Basically, I can add one to my hit roll for one CP for the unit. Okay, very nice. Sight to sight teletransport. Okay. Okay. If I've got the teleportarium keyword, yeah. which if I didn't take the shield weaver thing, I can take this instead, yeah. I can pick up my unit and put it down somewhere else nine inches away from you. Nice. So it gives a bit of extra mobility to a unit. Yeah, very, All very right. cool. Right, next up, we're going to have a look at what the Berserkers can do with their cards. Okay. Use a stratagem in the fight phase. This is called Cyber Stim Infusion. When they fight, I can reroll the hit roll in combat. Now, I should mention, this is when they're selected to fight. Yeah. So you couldn't use this when they fight on death. Yeah. Just to be aware. But that is very, very strong. Yeah. Next one. Two CPs. Mm -hmm. This is if you take that sort of mole cannon, I think it's called, okay, yeah. and you get the subterranean explosives. Okay. Okay. Um, now, in your shooting phase, basically, when you shoot something, depending on what you hit, there are some limitations. Yeah. But essentially, yeah. you half the move characteristics in the target unit. Okay. And that target unit is not eligible to win fight until all other units have done so. Wow. Okay. I'm um, probably taking a mole launcher. I mean, if I had a mole fired at me, I'd probably fight last. You would. I, have you seen their faces? But... Exactly. So there we have it. Now we're on to the kind of core yeah. stratagems for the units. Okay. Okay. This one, um, this is for the big units, I would say, or yeah. the bigger guys with the bolt weapons. Yeah. A modified hit roll of a six scores an additional hit okay. with those bolt weapons. Okay. Um, if you've got 11 or more models, then I get two extra hits per one. Hold on. Yeah. So if you had a 20-man blob... Shooting another 20... Or shooting like another... 11 or more, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, so if it's the enemy unit's got 11 or more, you yeah. get two extra hits. That's, a bit that's like how cool. blast works. Yeah, yeah. Very right. cool, very cool. Next up, Iron Storm. So if I've gone for the Iron Storm weapons, mm -hmm. then basically a six to wound inflicts one mortal wound. Is that an unmodified six to wound, Steve? It does happen to be so. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. If the unit contains 11 or more models, it costs two CP, so... Okay, is there a cap? There, it is six. Yeah. Six mortal wounds okay. is capped at. That is actually really nice. Yeah. 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 We've got something called pan-spectral warning. The scanner. Yeah. Then, basically, I've got that scanner keyword, two CPs, mm -hmm. and... If you set up within 12 inches of me, I can shoot you. A bit like an Auspex scan. Yeah, nice, nice. Shoot someone that comes from reserve. Very good. Yeah. Next up, we've got... This is you do this at the end of your movement phase. Really like this for one CP. You auto pass morale. Um, you then basically ignore all any rules that would, you know, make actions fail and stuff. It's all right. But you also gain a six plus feel no pain. That's very cool. For one CP. So you put that big brick of 20 out. You know it's going to be hurt. You bang the buffs on it, okay? Yeah, nice. Now, because I've got a medic, Michael, mm -hmm. in my units here. Yeah. I use this in the command phase. Okay. All right. I can select a medic, yeah. and if I'm below my starting strength, yeah. and not within engagement range, I can bring back D3 models to my unit. Okay, that's pretty important, yeah. because you could do that in your command phase, before you check how many points you score on your primary objectives. Yep. And remember, you could stack this with counting as extra models. Yep. If you brought back like three, yep. you could potentially be bringing nine models back for an objective. Or you think you've done really well and I'm just left with my sergeant and my medic, mm -hmm. and you think, oh, the Magna Rails are dead now. Yep. Cool, bring back D3 and the two Magna Rails are back. Great. Yeah. Okay, next one is light them up. If I've got the searchlight keyword, and you remember I said you can have this on the bikes, yeah. okay? Um, once I've shot and I've been hit by one, or you've been hit by one of my ranged attacks, mm -hmm. then for a CP, I can give you a judgment token. Pretty good on the bikes. Wow. Yeah. Next up is accelerated response. One CP, one of my Votan accelerated units. Okay. Yeah, so remember, that's the champ. That's the bikes. Yes. That's the fast attack vehicle. Okay, well, yeah. what does it do? So... When I'm selected to advance, yeah. I add 12 to my movement characteristics. 
and it's not um, collimative of any other abilities, for, ex for example, Steady Advance. Hold on one second. So this guy here will now move 17 inches across the table. Your champion could just like juggernaut through a million walls, Kool-Aid man it, yeah. and just turn up. Yeah. 17 inches. Now there isn't a way to advance and charge, is there? No. But it, that is a fantastic manoeuvrability stratagem. Um, and I actually think it's fantastic on some of these bikes. Moving 24. Moving 24, yeah. objective secured, taking objectives. Great. Um, yeah, fantastic stratagem. Okay, mag riders. Okay. You shoot me. Yep. You're minus one to hit. Okay. And this is on bikers, I assume? Yep. Yeah. However, if I advanced, you cannot reroll the hit roll either. Wow. Could combine the two potentially. So you could advance 12 inches and be minus one to hit with no reroll to hit them. Yeah. That's really cool. It's good, isn't it? Then we finally got the last one. Yes. It's an epic deed. It's called a Bastion Running. If you've got a Land Fortress, one CP, and you just fire on your normal bracket as if you had four wounds left. Perfect. And then the last one I wanted to talk about was called Reactive Reprisal. Yes. This one will cut, catch you out. So here's how it works, Michael. Okay. I put my massive brick of core Votan units into the middle of the table or something. They've got all the rerolls on them, all the buffs, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I use this in your shooting phase after an enemy unit that had won or more judgment tokens, okay, that was selected to shoot has resolved its attacks. Okay. I select my unit. Okay, and if I was hit by one of those attacks, whatever, and I'm not with the engagement range, obviously, I can shoot you. Hold on. Yeah. I've shot you in my turn. Yeah, and if you've got a judgment token on you. Okay, you just get to shoot me. Yeah. That yeah. is silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, right? It does depend on the size of it and stuff. Yeah. However, okay, I can only target the unit that basically shot me. Yeah. And um, I'm then not eligible to shoot in my next shooting phase. Okay. All right, so at least it takes up your shooting from next, from turn. next turn. Okay. But it just means, like, you've put out that unit and yeah. rather than, like, you know, your beautiful models you've just painted getting destroyed straight away, yeah. then actually you can still get to shoot them. That's very cool. I like it. It's cool, yeah. Nice. Excellent stuff. Well, we've looked at um, a, a few of your top picks from the stratagems. Yeah. There are, of course, more in this book, yeah. um, but we're not going to go through every single one because that would take literally forever. Yeah. Um, I really like the ones you picked. They seem very, very strong. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the final thing which we're going to talk about here, which is their secondaries. And how they play the and mission. And how they play the mission, which, of course, is very important to us at Vanguard Tactics and you when you hit the tabletop. Now we're into the chapter approved rules. So if you're playing a mission that involves secondary objectives, then you've got access to these four for the leagues of Votan. Yeah. Um, with match play rules, essentially you have to hold the objectives on the table according to any missions that you might be playing, and then you'd pick usually three uh, secondary objectives as well. Yeah. Let's go through the first one, Steve, which is in No Mercy, No Respite, the ancestors are watching. Right, okay, so this is a really good one, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, on first glance, I was like, that's a bit rubbish. Yeah. But actually, I looked at it, I tried it, and, I, and I've actually done really well with it. Yes. So how it works, this is no mercy, no respite, so a kind of killing base secondary. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of each phase, each phase, okay. psychic phase, I could kill you in the charge phase with my mortal wound <laughs> charging man. I could kill you in the shooting phase or the combat phase, and I could do the same in your turns as well. I yes. could shoot you in your phase. Yes, you can. I've yeah. got some stuff I could use, right? You certainly have. So at the end of each phase, I score two victory points if one or more enemy units mm -hmm. had one or more judgment tokens on them and they were destroyed. Okay. Now, you know that thing where it kind of counts as having one? Yeah. It's not going to actually trigger work. it. Okay. It literally has to physically have to have a counter on it. Yeah, cool. To be able to be scored, okay? And I score an additional point if that unit had three or more judgment tokens on it. Right. Not counting as or anything like that, okay. like the Greater Thuran. I literally have to have three tokens on you and get additional point for killing you. Okay, fantastic. At the end of that phase. Yeah. All right? All right. Now, there is one caveat. Any units that have got judgment tokens on them at the end of the game mm -hmm. are going to be taken off my score. Okay. And how I read this is yep. that I earn points yep. over the battle rounds. Yep. So I could earn, let's say I killed, I don't know, nine units sure. in different phases. Yep. 
and each of those worth two, I've yep. scored 18 points. Okay. Now, as you know, it's capped at 15. Yeah. But that's the score. These are earned. Yes. So then I would take off what I didn't score because they're still alive. Yeah. So let's say you had three left on the table. Yeah. I could still score 15 points mm. at the end of the game. Okay, fantastic. This is something that's going to need um, what we call an FAQ. Potentially, yeah. Potentially, um, so the Games Workshop can just clarify yeah. um, how this works. For me... But I agree it's the number of victory points you've earned from the secondary yeah. um, minus any at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, so I think that's how we'd probably run it here at VT. Yeah. Um, yeah, so to sum up, if you kill a unit that's had one or more tokens on it... At the end of a phase. At the end of a phase, you get two points. Yeah. You get an additional one if for each enemy unit that's been destroyed by you in that phase if they had three or more tokens on yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very cool. Next one is in Purge the Enemy. Mm -hmm. This is called Grudge Match. All right. I pick five of your units. Okay. One of them has to be a warlord. Right. And I have to kill them. And for each one I kill, I get a point. For each one I don't kill at yeah. the end of the game, I lose a point. Okay, seems fair. So you think oh, that's a bit rubbish. Can mm. you score five? Mm. But if your units are worth 150 points or more, yeah. I score an additional point when I kill them. Okay. And then if I kill you in combat, I get an additional point as well. Okay. So, so let's say it's under 150 points, but I kill you in combat, that's going to get me two for the kill. Yes. If, if you're 150 points and I kill you in shooting, that will get me two points. But if you're 150, I kill you in combat, it's going to be three. Yeah, cool. All right. Okay. It's quite good, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Not so bad. again, question you ask your opponent, what's your unit's worth? Yeah. Do, you, do you think you're likely to kill them? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Okay. So the next one is Prospects of Wealth. I can do this with a Votan infantry or biker unit. Okay. And I can only do this on objectives that aren't in my deployment zone. Okay. Basically in no man's land. Mm -hmm. And essentially this action that I need to do on this objective is completed at the end of my turn. Nice. All right. And there's one caveat. If you've got any models on it. Right. At this, when I try to perform this action at the, start of mm -hmm. the, at the end of movement phase. Yeah. I will not be able to start the action. Okay. Okay. So that's a really good way to deny it. Just yeah. by putting models on it. Yeah. Now, there's one more thing. Mm -hmm. So, basically, if I've got the scanner keyword, I get yeah. a plus one to this result. Okay. But on a roll of a six, then it becomes what we call a rich deposit. Right. And if I hold any of those at the end of the game, then I'll score additional points. Okay, so you could expect there to be maybe three objectives in No Man's Land. Yep. Um, maybe you'll get the action on all three. So I get, get three you. points per one. Nine points, and if at the end of the game you control one or more of those objectives, yep. and any of them are rich deposits. Yep. Um, you get another three points. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. It's all right, but I think right. it's too easily to be denied. Yeah. And I think I'd probably take raise the banners instead. Yeah. And if I was looking at a shadow operation, because that's essentially what it's competing with. Yeah. Nice. The last one is battlefield supremacy. Okay. And this is actually, I think, an outstanding one for this army. As we know, the army is very durable. Yes. But it is a little bit slow. Yeah. It's called lay claim. And you right. read it and you think, I've never taken this. Try it. It's actually good, I think. And good players will be able to use this really well. Yeah. I give you the ability to set up three objectives okay. anywhere in no man's land. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's, you know, have to be essentially like six inches from the edge, nine inches away from each other, and also yeah. six inches away from your deployment zone. Okay. If I hold them at the end of the game, I'm going to score five points for each one that I hold. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very interesting. End game scoring. Yeah. You're probably going to be alive at the end of the game. It means you can play a sort of slower game. Yeah. As you go forward. And of course it does give your opponent the opportunity potentially to try and deny it. Yeah. Um, and if you go first or second, that yep. can influence it as well. It's a very, very interesting secondary. Yeah. And I agree, um, depending on how you play it, you're probably definitely going for 10 points on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very good. So I think on the whole, the mission play is harder than other armies because mm -hmm. they are a little bit slower. Yeah. Having the access to those psychic secondaries and still yeah. casting powers, is going to be really important. So I think taking that grim now is just going to give you a few more options. Yeah. Because this army's not going to do engage on all fronts very well. No. It's not going to do behind enemy lines particularly well either. Not really. And I just think that unless you're taking like spam of bikes, mm -hmm. those secondaries can be a little bit harder to play for. Yeah. Um, raise the banners could work quite well with this type of army. Yeah, I agree. But again, the infantry have got to get there. 
and they're only moving five or eight, so it might even be difficult to raise a banner in no man's land, potentially, turn mm. one. Mm. So I do think this army will struggle a little bit on the secondaries. Yes. Um, you can pretty much guarantee it's always going to have three characters, so it will probably give up ten points on assassinate. Yeah. Um, and if you are taking lots of bikes in models, taking no prisoners against this army is pretty much a guaranteed kind of ten to fifteen points a game. Yeah. Um, and if they go for the vehicle heavy build, then it's going to give up, bring it down. Yeah. So this army is going to hemorrhage a lot of secondaries. Mm. None of these secondaries are in auto 15. They can be easily played around, I think. Yeah, potentially. I think the only one I'd, I'd argue is the Ancestors of Watching is incredibly powerful. It is, yeah. But other than that, I, you, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's one of those that against like small model car armies yes. like Custodes, yeah. like that's gonna be a terrible secondary pick. Yeah, potentially, yeah. So again, I think it's all about understanding the mission play. Yes, the army's very powerful, it mm -hmm. can hit hard in shooting, it's okay in combat. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's amazing. It's not, for example, Blood Angels no. or Harlequins, like I love, but I think it's got some good rules in there. Yeah. However, the secondaries do bring the power of the army down a little bit. Yeah. The maneuverability of the army does bring down the power of the army. So yes, the guns are scary, yeah. but look, there's terrain. There is terrain. You can hide. Yeah, the guns aren't incredibly long range. No. They're like between 18 and 30. Yeah. So a fast-paced maneuverability army will do well. Also, units that are very good at killing infantry. Mm -hmm. Like we were looking at, for example, my death company were just chainsaws. Yeah. Tear through these guys. Yeah. So again... It is going to die, the army. It is going to die. You know, you've got a lot of toughness for bodies. If you've got anti-horde, it will work. Yeah. Um, I think also important to talk about the sort of primary mission and holding objectives. The key, I think, to making Votan work is probably the bikes. Um, being obsec, denying objectives um, by stopping your opponent holding them, you see, by taking them at the end of your turn. Yeah. Also, you've got these big blocks that can stand on objectives and usually survive, yeah. uh, especially with characters. And there's a few different ways to, to manipulate how many models you count as. Um, I think their primary is quite good. But again, it's going to be one of those slower paced primary scoring armies. It's not going to cut you out of the game straight away. Yeah. Um, it is going to shoot you and it is going to hurt. Um, but their secondary game is not amazing. And their primary game is okay and yeah. steady. So yeah. Yeah. Any abilities that you have in your codex that can turn off objective secured, mm -hmm. take them in the yeah. leagues. Of, if, yeah. if, if this becomes like a new meta... This is going to be a very popular army, yes. especially lots of bikes and warriors, because yeah. you know when the box set comes out, that's pretty much what you get. We're yeah. not going to see the land fortresses. You know, no. We don't know the release schedule, um, so we are going to see bikes and infantry yeah. for the time being. So lots of anti-horde weapons. Yeah. Uh, if you are going to tournaments, it's going to do you quite well. Yeah. Interesting nuance. If you are turning off Objective Secured, it also turns off the count as extra models. Um, on units, so that's a little tidbit of information there. So if you can turn off OBSEC, that's going to work really well against this army. Yeah, absolutely. Well guys, look, we really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we've really enjoyed it and it's actually yeah. given us a fantastic understanding of this codex. Uh, certainly now when I go playing against Votan, I know exactly the questions to be asking, what to watch out for, yeah. and hopefully I won't be gotcha moment as everything we do here at VT is all about playing the game in the right way and also being sporting throughout that. So if you have enjoyed this video, do check out our battle report where you can see the Votan in action against the incredible James from Seek Studios and see his beautifully painted models on the tabletop. Yeah. So go and check out that video and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.